Welcome to day number three. Sam Roberts Show. I can't wait till I've been on enough days that I don't have to, I don't remember what day number it is. Hopefully by the second week. Be like, what is this? Is this day seven, eight, nine? Nine, you say, Paul? Wow, we've accomplished a lot. Welcome to Sam Roberts Show. So much to do today. Oh my God. We are live as we are every day. Starting right this time, noon Eastern, here on OB Radio. Lloyd Kaufman is coming in today. Lloyd Kaufman, uh, the founder, the guru, the god of Troma Films, responsible for movies like The Toxic Avenger and Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD and Class of Nukem High, all the movies that you used to watch while learning how to masturbate watching USA Up All Night. Lloyd Kaufman will be here as well. I mean, he's promised to. DJ Who Kid, as we've said. We're in a different studio. We're all the way up at Lincoln Center. It's five, six, maybe seven blocks away from the actual studio. So we'll see when DJ Who Kid makes it. But uh, a lot, a lot in store to get to. By the way, drinking regular soda. That's right, Francesa. A man's beverage. None of that diet bullshit here on Sam Roberts' show. Update on John Kerry's condition if we get to it. And... We got a little preview of Caitlyn Jenner's reality show coming up. The former Bruce Jenner, now Caitlyn. She's got her own reality show coming, so we're going to get into that. A whole lot to talk about here on Sam Roberts' show today. If you want to be a part of it, call right now, 866-969-1969. Phone lines are open at 866-969-1969. And you, too, can be a part of Sam Roberts' show. We've got a new Twitter account. At SR Show SXM. That's at SR Show SXM. You can follow along with everything that's going on in this party room. Vast, huge, massive studio. Um, and a major announcement as far as that Twitter account goes. We have broken a record. Everybody was talking about Caitlyn Jenner two days ago. As of today, the SR Show SXM account which you can get to at twitter.com slash SRshow, SXM, is the quickest account in the history of Twitter to reach 650 followers. That's right. No Twitter account has reached 650 followers quicker than SR Show SXM. So make sure you follow that and you too can be a part of it. Let's go to... Uh Jason in Detroit to start the show. What's going on, Jason? That's amazing. Thanks. See, I was looking around. I wanted something. If you go to my Instagram at not Sam, you can see I was I did play with his dog, and I told Troy who was there with me. Troy Kwan was there. I was like, dude, get a picture of me playing with Stone Cold's dog right now. I did Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast while I was out in L.A. I wanted to take something. I was looking around his house for what I could grab, but Steve Austin, and if you listen to his podcast that I was on, you know this because we talked about it. He's got no memorabilia. This is the only Stone Cold stuff. In Stone Cold Steve Austin's house. He's got a giant Got Milk poster that's him holding two things of milk. And for some odd reason, this is the oddest piece of merchandise I've ever seen in the Stone Cold collection. In his kitchen, he's got a ceramic Stone Cold cookie jar. That's all he has, though, as far as Stone Cold stuff goes. Well, yeah, definitely uh, check it out if you haven't already. Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for the call. Uh, I did, while I was doing Stone Cold's podcast, manage to uh, get some shots in at Kevin Pollack because I figure, you know what? If Kevin Pollack is going to go out of his way to take shots at me on every show that he does, I'm going to go ahead and jump on this podcast that gets literally hundreds of thousands, approaching millions of listeners and make my opinion known. So this is what I said. You know, have you ever heard of an actor named Kevin Pollack? Yes. He's got a big problem with me. He's made it very public that he's got a problem with Why? me. Why? 
Because I don't. He doesn't like How me. How can anybody have a problem with you? That's what I've always you said. You get along with everybody. I do. I thought I did, but Kevin Pollak has gone out and he's and he said it on his radio show. Yeah. And he's gone on Reddit and he said all kinds of stuff. Right. About me and being on the air and this and that because and he called up you know Opie's show one time because he doesn't think I paid my dues enough. He couldn't be. How many dues you got to pay, Sam? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I've been here just because he just turned on his radio. Right. Doesn't mean. And let's be honest, it's Kevin Pollack. Like most of the movies he's been in, is because somebody more famous is in the movie. Right. It's not like anybody goes to a few right. good men and says, "Oh, shot? see Kevin Pollack." I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it wasn't for me. Hey, you got. Yeah, hold on. You got. You got to get a visual. He's, Sam's got a GoPro over across the damn room. <laughs> but you're hearing the audio version. Of us. I, I said, "Is that a shot?" And Sam goes, "I don't know." And he puts his hand out to the side. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. shots fired here at 316 Gimmick Street. <laughs> Helicopters, ambulance is on the way. That's right. How do you like that? Stone Cold is okay with me. Stone Cold thinks I've paid dues. Kevin Pollack doesn't, but Stone Cold does. Just, just getting that dude to laugh that hard at anything was a major, major life accomplishment. I mean, goddamn, he was getting such a kick. Out of it. Stone Cold is a real dude. A real ass dude, as some would say. Let's go to Superfan Eric, speaking of real ass dudes. What's up, pal? Yeah, buddy. Superstar Hogo and whatever the hell he was. It was great. Listen, hoagies, baby. I'm delivering hoagies right now. I'm going to put a little boost on some of these for these guys there in Philadelphia. Boost it up. Talk to you later, buddy. I just heard somebody texted me that you couldn't hear the callers at first. I think I fixed it, though. I think I, I don't think program was up, but I should be able to fix it. They're going crazy, Paul. You want to answer them? Ladies and gentlemen, which one are you taking? That one? Fresh in the building. First time on the daily version. Of Sam Robert show, it's DJ Who Kid. What's up, pal? So excited. That's the one. How you doing, buddy? What's up, man? What are you doing? I'm loving it right now. The rain stopped. It's yeah. Hot. Oh you know my I'm saying everybody's out in the streets. Yeah. Running around. And the women get very, very excited once the rain stops in New York and it's the summer. They take all their clothes off. Yeah. The sundresses come back out. It's it's a it's a big big deal. No panties. Is that right? They don't wear panties. Yeah, especially the you know the office workers. They don't wear any panties. Which offices do you go to? I mean, it's unfortunate I got to deal with the serious like some workers, but uh. See, that's why we moved over here to Lincoln Center. We don't deal with any of that bullshit anymore. A lot of bush out here too, man. It's their bush. They don't shave. They're on the seventies thing out here, man. Wow. I, well, it. I guess you know what? It was just winter, mm -hmm. so they haven't gotten their summer haircuts yet. I gotta get some pics for these chicks out here. Man. Please do, please do. Where have you been, who kid? It's it's been. Uh, I mean, I guess we saw you on Friday, but you yeah. disappear for days, if not weeks, at a time. I actually was. Uh, I was supposed to be here Monday, but I was stuck in Toronto because of all this, all that rain. That it rained for like three days straight. I almost built an ark. So they canceled all the flights. So I had to like deal with like getting stuck in. Uh, a different place in Toronto so I went to another chick's crib so I couldn't make it Monday <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you just went to some other bitch's crib yeah that's great French that's bitch that's great uh, what did you say Paul what do you want me to do just do a test pick up what line one okay alright I'm gonna test Paul right now he's gonna test our phones who kid oh to see if it works yeah okay. how you doing Paul I hear you alright great alright so I fixed it don't worry I'm I'm quite the engineer myself. A lot of people don't realize that I can handle hosting and board hopping and engineering. I can do it all. I'm exhausted though. I see you're tired, man. Uh, you know, speaking of tired. Yeah, tell me. I've been getting attacked from Friday show with all these like specialists with the lying uh, detector machines and all that. Well, I definitely want to talk about it because Lloyd Kaufman's coming on the show later on today. Who that old school guy that does them horror movies? Yeah, he does all like, like sci-fi horror and stuff. He's still alive. Yeah, well, it wasn't from the fifties; it was the eighties. No, it looked like the fifties. No, it was the eighties. It was definitely the eighties. How is he alive and Johnny Carson's dead? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those cruel jokes that God <laughs> plays on us. Maybe you could ask him when he gets here. But I want to know. Get God on the line. I want to know what his opinion is on you. Yeah. Claiming on Friday that you were sitting in Long Island mm -hmm. watching Twilight movies. With Taylor Lautner. 
with Taylor Lautner, you're getting very excited as he was oh, turning into yeah. a werewolf. Okay, yeah, make it clear. I wasn't excited because it's six pack and boily body. Well, I'm saying you like the transition process. Yeah. You like when he had those wolf legs, right. but the man body. Yeah. Like, you like that. Mm -hmm. You like that. That animalistic urge came out of you. Yeah. And you saw Taylor Lautner, but you then claimed that you got abducted by aliens as you were watching. Yeah. You're still on this. Some great joints. Yeah. You haven't given this up. Never. I'm not. You said. Happy. DJ Who Kid told me <laughs> that he got abducted. Funny, man. He got abducted by aliens. Again, we got the phones working, so if you want to call up 866-969-1969. I mean, they could relate to us, right? I, I No, because I think you've made it up, but you're insisting. This is what weirded me out. He went on a show on Friday, and he was talking about getting abducted by an alien, and they were mm. gray, and they were eunuchs. They had no genitals, but he saw their pelvises, and they looked like mannequins, and they had reptilian skin, and he had all these details. And I was like, who kid has once again just made something up off the top of his head? Come on, man. You got Bruce Jenner running around here with no fucking dick, and you worried about Caitlyn. Me. Caitlyn Jenner. But... Man, get the fuck out of here. But we're off the air. We're in an office at SiriusXM. We're in the office of the guy who runs Who Kid's channel, Shade 45. Love it. And he goes, Who Kid goes, Yo, man, I was just telling Sam, I got abducted by aliens last night. <laughs> and he's serious. And we're off the air. I don't know who he's, who he's, who he's performing for anymore. <laughs> I even told Waka Flocka this, but he hung up on me. Good he hung up on you. Waka Flocka's the one who's supposed to be on drugs all the time, not you. <laughs> You're still insisting that this happened. I'm telling you, man, it really did, man. I'm I'm gonna stand by my dick. Have you your dick? I mean, that's that's you know. Is that a slang I don't know about? Yeah, yeah. When you're telling the truth, you're like instead of saying word is bond now, you say I'm standing by my dick. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> next time a caller calls up and he doesn't believe me. Because you're not supposed to lie on your dick. Like you know, you lie. Say I had sex with a certain individual. Right. You're not supposed to do that. But you're lying. Right, and your dick feels betrayed by that. That's tr that's that's amazingly embarrassing. That's like fucked up. If you get caught. You look like a fucking total loser. Yeah. yeah. And then your dick shrivels up because your dick doesn't want that kind of yeah, betrayal yeah. and humiliation. You don't want that kind of promo. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Um, well, yeah, go ahead and call up if you think who kid's telling the truth. So uh, you haven't been contacted by Alien Sense. I mean, uh, I saw Bruce Jenner all weekend on some TV. <laughs> fucking widow. He's not an alien. He's a trans <laughs> individual who He's kid. And you didn't see Bruce. Mental case. You saw Caitlyn. Okay. Have you heard, yeah. by the way, the uh, promo? Caitlyn Jenner mm -hmm. is getting a reality show. Oh, really? That's right. Bruce Jenner, no formerly kidding. Bruce Jenner, now Caitlyn, is getting her very own reality show. Um, and a preview came out for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you hear about it? I don't want to see him. I'm, I almost threw up looking at him. Well, I got to tell you something, Who Kid. I think you're being very prejudicial. No, I'm not. I don't Be like his lips. I was look. Do you think that's the problem? It's disgusting. What do you think of this? <laughs> yes, nasty too. <laughs> okay, all right. So you don't like my lips either. Whatever. No, like, he, he puts like uh, he puts like shots in his lips, like collagen, and it makes it like curve. It looks like a little ramp. Like you need like a skateboardist to jump off that shit. Well, he's got that selfie duck lip thing. Is he w did live with Kim Kardashian for a long time? It's disgusting. If you're in. I said it yesterday. If you're going under the knife anyway, I don't think there's any excuse for a person who's making the transition, who's got money, mm. to not look. I think Caitlyn Jenner looks fabulous. As, How old is he? 65? Why are you doing this now? As Well, because he couldn't do it when he was at the Olympics. Yeah, shit to do. <laughs> you're 65 years old. I, you're not getting pussy anymore. No, that's you're true. You're going to get a pussy. I mean, maybe he will now. He'll find some nice lesbian or something. Loser. And then he, he's, he's c continuously telling us that, yo, this is a personal thing. It's not about... Whatever, blah, blah, blah. But he got it on every goddamn fucking... It's, 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 it's everywhere. He does. They were just what saying... The news. Caitlyn Jenner is beat Obama to a million followers. She set the world record. The quickest person to a million followers. In four hours, she got a million followers. That was until yesterday when SR Show SXM mm -hmm. launched the Twitter account for this show. SR Show SXM. The fastest Twitter account to ever hit 650 followers. So that's huge. We're dying this year. We're all going to die. The Cause human race? Because the Russians are creating these bombs. They're like, yeah, we're too busy worried about... About Bruce Jenner. His dick. And his genitals. His yeah. genitals. Genitals are gone. You, well, he's, if he's, he's not just going to cut his dick off. He'd have a vagina. He's got to have some kind of genitals. Or maybe he's like the alien. Huh? You think so? Just a <laughs> eunuch now? <laughs> um, they did say... Kevin Undergaro called up here on Monday and said he wondered... 
and he thinks it's a little far-fetched, but he wondered if he was calling himself Caitlyn with a C to take another shot at the Kardashian family, not taking on that K. Oh, God. And there's actually an article that came out today <laughs> that it was indeed oh, to God. further separate himself from the Kardashians, although he's getting a reality show on E. We've had the Kardashian mom on the show before, right? Yeah, we had her on this show when we first started doing Fridays, and I asked her, mm. is Bruce Jenner transitioning? She fucking lied. She said, uh, not as far as I know. She totally knew, because he mm. said that the family had met Caitlyn before. Uh, let's go to Chris, the teacher, and see what he's up to. Who could, Chris, the teacher, has been calling in mm. every day, all week long, mm. and saying that he has not been going to work because he wants to hear the show. Chris, the teacher, are you there? Yeah, baby, I'm home. You're not at work still. I am. No, three days. Good. Leave the kids behind. No child left behind. How about this? All children <laughs> left behind for Sam Roberts' show. I gotta get a doctor's note now, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> Plus, like face disciplinary action. Yo, who kid? You're that pretty early for like a minority. Usually, I know, man. Late. I'm supposed to be like you right now. Who kid? You could be offended by that statement. <laughs> Instead, you agreed with it. I mean, no, I'm not. <laughs> bro, bro, your Twitter is awesome. By oh, the thank way, you, sir. Okay, your Twitter is fucking awesome. You know what's funny? I was uh, talking about you with Katie Linendahl, who does this show all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just me, not you. Goodbye, Chris, the teacher. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine. If you want to call Sam Roberts' show right now, I was talking to Katie Linendahl about you. Mm -hmm. She does this show all the time. You do this show all the time, but your paths have not crossed yet. Oh wow! And she goes. Oh, yeah, I looked him up. Uh, she's, like, on the Today Show. She's very kind of clean cut. Oh, okay. And she was like, oh, yeah, I saw his photo on your Instagram, so I looked him up uh, over the weekend. I was like, oh, yeah. And she was like, yeah, it was enough. I saw his Instagram. <laughs> that was enough for me. <laughs> she wasn't ready for the trap gods. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I was fine. I went through a couple pictures. It was enough. It was enough. <laughs> Let's set it up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm absolutely going to introduce you to, but I want to play for you, Who Kid. Oh, for real? Leave those headphones on. I want to play for you the preview. This just came out. Oh, wow. Caitlyn Jenner's uh, new reality show. Yeah, listen. Oh, God. It is obvious that he has a professional makeup artist, because like I said, Caitlyn Jenner, for a 65-year-old woman... He needs a professional. 65-year-old woman is a good-looking woman. You can't tell me, Caitlyn Jenner, if you didn't know that. First of all, I don't think you did know that was Bruce Jenner when you saw that photo. Fucking nut. It doesn't look like Bruce Jenner. I thought it was the bitch from Friends. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston? She got mad old. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> bitch got old. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know what it is? I have, like, I have like so many gay friends. Yeah. And then uh, they've been through so much BS. Yeah. Coming out. Yeah. Like, this is just this is too complex. It's just like... Some gay people are kind of pissed off at it. This is like this guy's getting promo, and he's. And he, but isn't it a good thing for gay people? Because it's, it's kind of good, but it, it just it's, makes it's, people it's, more accepting. It's the way they're going about it, though. It's just like this guy's representing like transgenders, gays. Yeah, I mean he and, is. And, 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 and like my son called me and thought it was like, yo, what? What's going on here, Dad? This is normal. Do you, how old is your son? He's fourteen. And you have, does he know the transgender world? At 14, he must kind of. It's a different world that we're living it in. It is a different world. In high school, they have crews, they have gay crews. I mean, Do they have trans crews yet? I don't know about the trans part. <laughs> I mean, we had that in high school. We made fun of the butt. But right. Well, that's that's the problem. You you were the people <laughs> yeah. who were making their lives difficult. But, but, you know, they always say you're born like that. But I think it's, I think he's just mentally. A cuckoo bird, like you, sixty-five. Yeah, but do you think all trans people are cuckoo? I don't birds? think all trans people are cuckoo birds. Just older trans people. They just want to do some something different. But when you're sixty-five, right? You, you've you've been through it all. You got like ten kids. He's kind of like he's black. He has like ten kids. He does have a lot of kids. Yeah, he has a lot of kids, and he's got Olympic gold medals, which is another kind of you know to be that good of an athlete is a little black as well. Yes, he did, and very manly. He, very manly. He won the damn gold. Right. And not to mention, uh, he was on the cereal box that I used to always cherish. You know, that's my Wheaties. Era. Yeah. Wheaties. So, well, I said on Monday, he needs to get back on that Wheaties box if Wheaties wants to sell some flakes. <laughs> like, uh, you wouldn't buy that, but I would buy it. I'm not getting that fucking box. I just saw a tweet. This is also breaking news. We uh, We got a new thing. Breaking news. Breaking news oh, on the Sam Roberts' oh, That's, that's, that's right. News, uh, breaking again, news. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> okay, look. Monday, the breaking news was 
Caitlyn Jenner on the cover of, of Vanity Fair. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, the breaking news was the president of FIFA stepping down. Wednesday, <laughs> more breaking news, always on Sam Roberts' show. Uh, do it again. Oh, shit. And the breaking news is, this is really on Twitter, Dennis Rodman is trying to jump on this bandwagon. Come on, man. Dennis Rodman says he wants to go on a date with Caitlyn Jenner. Are you fucking kidding me? I kid you not. That is breaking news. Dennis Rodman quoted saying he wants to go on a date. And that sounds like a shitty joke from like 1999 or something. <laughs> hey, guys, I just heard Dennis Rodman wants to go on a date with her. No, but, yeah, but, this is real. But, but it's fucked up. Like, he actually never went the feminine route, but he's been dressing like well, there's a, a difference. He between, married himself. He did. He married himself at a book signing. Yeah. He showed up in a wedding dress with the wig on and everything. Um, right. Because I don't think, I think Dennis Robin, that's the difference. Okay. Everybody says, you know, people are just doing it for attention. Yeah. What is it real? What is it fake? Bruce Jenner is an actual trans person, I think. Dennis Rodman is just a guy who likes attention. He doesn't want to fucking date Caitlyn Jenner. He just wants people to talk about him again. He wants. <laughs> The breaking news to New be shit. about him. New shit. <laughs> he's like, I mean, he's just looking for attention. He's not a trans person. He's not. He's just a confused individual who needs people talking about him. But please admit that he could be ten percent a cuckoo bird. Dennis Rodman? No. Bruce Jenner. Yeah, ten percent. I don't know. I don't not, think he's a cuckoo bird. How how can you not think that? Because I think he's just a guy. He went crazy. It's just like somebody getting all times. He's I don't remember <laughs> shit. He's sixty five. So letting you, him do him. You think he just you woke think up? He's a bitch now. You think he just woke up one day? Yeah. Confused. He don't know what he is. He gets lost. He thinks he's a woman. He ain't fucking his wife anymore. Well, no, he's not married to her anymore, is he? I think him and Chris Jenner are separated, divorced. I would fuck the shit out of Chris Jenner. Well, I would fuck the shit out of Caitlyn Jenner. I uh, wouldn't fuck <laughs> All right, well, that's your prerogative. No, I don't think... <laughs> it's definitely your prerogative. I think he's a guy who, at 65, realized... Well, he didn't realize he wanted to make the transition. I think he wanted to make the transition, like, 30 years ago. I think he's the biggest hoax ever, and I think he's a cuckoo bird. You think he's a hoax? I think he's just doing You think it. this is a ruse? I think this is all a joke. So you think he's rumpusing? There's children dying in Africa. There's nuclear weapons being bought at this moment. But no, United States of America would rather watch some cuckoo bird who's 65 <laughs> wearing a fucking gold dress and acting like it's courageous. Well, that is, not only they act like it's courageous, but Fuck out of here. the ESPYs, I don't know if this counts as breaking news. This broke last night. White people are crazy. The S, this is true. <laughs> you know the ESPN awards or the ESPY awards. Yeah. Drake hosts them usually. Uh, July 15th is the ESPY Awards, and Caitlyn Jenner is going to receive a yeah. Courage Award at God. the ESPYs this year. Courage of what? Wearing a fucking glitter dress? No, I, here's what the courage is, DJ Who Kid. Oh, courage, God, courage <sighs> to follow her dreams, even though there are people like he's, you. He's 65. He's not 20. He couldn't have done it when he was 20, he's though. He's not 30. In the 70s, you know how dumb that shit would have well, looked in the 70s? That's fucking problem being raised in the 70s. This is fucking 2015. You're supposed to do this when you're young now. Yeah, but guess what? I don't give a fuck. Do you know what now. you're also supposed to do when you're young? What? Take fucking selfies and have plastic surgery. It's okay now. But you could tell that to Kris Jenner. You know what? You could tell Kanye West's mom that maybe she didn't need a fucking tummy tuck at 65 years old. Yeah. Maybe she'd still be breathing. I know. But people make these decisions. Do you think Kris Jenner's a cuckoo bird? But those are normal. Well, how is that normal? This thing is not normal. It's you think Chris, co- I don't even know how to talk to my kid. What am I going to tell my kid? I'm not going to say he's a What dickhead. am I supposed to do? What am I going to tell my what kid? What am I supposed to do? This is normal? You're supposed to tell your kid that people were born I'm not this supposed way. to do that. He's Play some to Lady to Gaga school. music for him. No, he's supposed to go to school <laughs> and just study and worry about fucking life. You know what your problem is, you kid? some fucking guy in a gold dress that's on at every fucking news channel. You walk around and you got your flat... And I'm a nigga. You are. You are you no, you're pretending to be. You wear your flat brim hat. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretending it. You got your Jordans on. Yeah, yeah. You your shit switch is expensive. Yeah, bro. very expensive sneakers, Fuck, yeah. your top of the line jeans, yeah. and you're just trying to disguise the fact that you are an old white man mm. trapped <laughs> in a black man's body. That, that's why that's why I'm going this route. You know, that's when I was your this age, this was not acceptable. No. Yeah, 70 is the 70s okay, but now it's accepted, it's cool, and you can't fuck with little kids. This guy is 65. 
What do you mean he's fucking with little kids? I mean, I'm talking about little kids that have issues uh -huh. now. It's all, it's good to like you know give them the courage. They got to be who they got to be. Oh, so you're saying but that not this guy? You're, you're saying no? I don't care. Not this guy. You're saying okay? that if you were if you're a kid now, yes. who's going through some shit? Yep. You got their back. I have their back. All but day. if you're an older person, I have like sorry. tons of gay friends. All my friends, like probably all my friends are gay. But I mean, we're friends, and guess what? You're gay too. I'm not gay. <laughs> However, I appreciate everybody. I made the announcement on yesterday's show that I am transitioning into a wombat because that <laughs> I is saw that. yes, that's that's. I feel like my soul <laughs> was meant to be a wombat, and I do <sighs> hope that people follow my journey here on Sam Roberts Show into wombat dumb mm -hmm. and realize that that's who I was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm 31, and it's 2015. Is it early enough for me to tell you that I want to be a wombat? Are you cool with that? I'm cool. So you're cool knowing your friend, Sam Roberts. You know me now. You're going to die next week. He's 65. Who gives a fuck? Oh, you're saying... He's 65. That if he's 65, he should be like, well... Holy shit. He's what do I got, five years left as a woman? He's supposed to be fucking squeezing the shit out of his grandkids. Right. Going on trips. You got so much money. Why are you worried about showing us this? He doesn't feel fulfilled as a person. If anything, he should have did this privately and then just lived his life. He has money. If you have money to do that, you have money to do it on your own. And speaking of do it privately. Why do you need to tell me this? As we said, we'll play it again a little bit. The uh, preview for the show, I Am Kate. So many people go through life and they never deal with their own issues. No matter what the issues are, ours happen to be gender identity. But so this is a preview for his reality show. And I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. I was arguing my case. And I was talking about this. And I was looking at his photo and being like, he's a, he is a good-looking 65-year-old woman. If I were to fuck a 65-year-old woman, he would be in the running. For sure. Caitlin. Yeah, all right. I'm not going to lie on the photos. All right. Yeah, they look cool. But I'm going to tell you this. That trailer is the first time that hot 65 year old woman the voice came out of her and there's no fucking doubt that that is bruce jenner's voice yeah. like you look at the photo and you're like is bruce jenner in there and then he starts talking yeah, and you're like yep there you know he why? is because what did i say earlier i threw up when i was i was having yogurt and i saw his lips oh it's the lips the that's lips what makes that sound i don't even like women doing that we're all dealing with gender identity like enjoy. sounds like he kind of sounds like larry flint when he talks enjoy your fucking lips people like if you don't have any enjoy the fact that that's what god gave you you ain't got no lips these aren't enjoy the lips it. these aren't the lips that i was really made to be born with <laughs> i really feel more comfortable with some injections in them <laughs> Whoa, whoa. What happened to the lady I was looking at? <laughs> you look like Jessica Lang a minute ago. It's like he's waiting for a skateboardist to jump off his fucking mouth. <laughs> fucking loser. My lips are half pipes. He's a nut. I don't care what anybody say. Listen. He's a fucking nut. I don't think he's crazy. I think he's got to do something about the voice. Because he does not see, he looks like Jessica Lang. He doesn't sound like Jessica Lang from American Horror Story. <laughs> Would you fuck Jessica Lang from American Horror Story? No. Okay, well, then we, I'll, uh, I'll we punch your face. You will. Let's go to James in Maryland. If you want to call the show, 866 969 1969. We go to James. What's up, pal? Welcome to Sam Roberts Show. Hey, thank you. Um, I was just going to let uh, DJ Who Kid know. He said earlier he thought that uh, white people were crazy because, mm. uh, you know, Bruce Jenner's cuckoo bird and all that. I just want to remind him look, if you go to Craigslist or you go to Backpage mm -hmm. and talk to Jimmy Norton, there are a lot of niggas out there that are cuckoo <laughs> Yeah, you know what? You know what? He's right. Yeah, he is right. But those are normal circumstances. What do you mean? Like these people are selling their body. They're, 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 they're <laughs> That's doing... normal. Yeah, because they're doing something to make money and they're dressing weird. Like you've I been listening to that, that Usher song too much. I could accept that. You're saying, shorty, I don't mind if you dance on a pole. It don't make you a hoe. Yeah, it don't matter. Shorty, I don't mind if you're working till three. Like, all right, if, if you're leaving with me. Yes. Go and get that money, money, money. Exactly. That money, money, money. I'm like a pimp. <laughs> but don't you see those are those are like come on. It's like one plus one equals two. Those are normal circumstances. If my son asks me about that, I can explain that. I can't explain Bruce Jenner. So what if your I can't son explain my son what the hell is going on? What if your son at fourteen said I'm trans? I'm a chick. Then he's good. He's You're young. good. He's t it's 2015. I accept him. How? What's the age? What's the trans cutoff? 
60 fucking years old. <laughs> 60. <laughs> Fuck, he missed it by five years. He's fucked. God damn it. I was right there. I, you know, I, I, don't, you know, I don't know, man. You know what? I honestly don't give a fuck. I am going on tour. I'm right. fucking bitches. <laughs> right. That's, you got a whole thing going on. The only thing I'm annoyed with is it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's on the news. It is TV. everywhere. You can't even escape it. No. So a nigga like me who don't care. Right. I have no choice but to see it. They're forcing you to care. Like, I'm like turning my... I'm just watching Netflix now. Right. I can't fucking take it. No, you. Well, you're putting your Twilight movies back on. His lips, I would. I probably would accept it. But his lips drives me crazy. His lips, you don't like. It's disgusting. Yeah, all you're left to do nothing but sit there and watch Taylor Lautner with his shirt off for a little while longer. <laughs> He's a hunk. I want to be like him. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine to call up Sam Roberts Show and talk to yours truly as well as DJ Who Kid. Let's talk to Ryan in Detroit. Welcome to the show, Ryan. How you doing? About 12 years ago, I worked with a guy who was uh, turned into one. Mm -hmm. What was weird was... How old was the guy? He, uh, he was mid-40s. Okay. That's okay by you, kid. 40s. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. But here's what was really weird about it. Uh, it was an auto shop. He worked <laughs> in the back, and his wife worked in the, uh, in the office. Yeah. So we fired this motherfucker. <laughs> he came back. He, we fired him as a man. He came back with tits. Makeup and hair. <laughs> Did he? Is that? Is it because you fired him? No, I, I don't. It's a small hick town, but they made him. Uh, they made him go through some psychological uh, therapy and testing for over a year before he could change his name legally. And yeah, I mean, he, go ahead. So fucked up. <laughs> it, 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 and you know, it, it never bothered me because. I always had this feeling it was something fucking really weird with this motherfucker. Mm. But the only thing that ever bothered me really was uh, when he would talk about sucking dick in front of me. Like, man, we, we gotta calm this shit the fuck down. Cause you can do whatever you want. I don't care. But I don't want to hear about you fucking blowing some dude. Cause that's just fucking disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess I, I can respect that. Everybody gets their point yeah. of view. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to hear about a, a man uh, giving me details. I don't know why a man yeah. wouldn't would insist on doing that. Like, who could? If if you were gay, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah. But if you came in and said, "Oh, Sam, I got to tell you about this cock I was sucking last night," yeah. I go, "Who could? Like, relax. What, why? Why are you telling me all this?" But but if I'm gay, it's normal. It's normal to do it, but it's not normal to give me every detail. Like I'm interested. Maybe that guy was gay. He just. He just went all out. He dressed crazy. Right. He was having a good time. I don't know. I don't have a problem with I it. I mean, I'm not expert in, in, in the gay area, but if you're gay, you're I mean... pretty well versed. You're, you're supposed to be like... I mean, if you're gay, you're supposed to dress like you, like Sam. What is that you, supposed you like to mean? I mean, you know, you dress like a gay person. Well, I guess that's if that means I'm stereotypically fashionable, then I'll accept it. I mean, you could be gay. I could, who knows? Who it's knows? Okay. I got a long life ahead of me. Uh, uh, 60. Z in Atlanta. Can we all agree that this is the biggest case of post-Olympic blues being carried out for <laughs> years? Hell He's fucking crazy. yeah. He's crazy. Yo, he I, so I, am I really, am I really that crazy to assume that he's crazy? But didn't he say on the interview that even when he was in the Olympics, I think, I think the Olympics. So what are you, you're going to believe everything he's saying? Like he's really, what, what is he, like God's gift to fucking the planet? Like he's not lying? Here's what I he's think. He's a Kardashian. I don't think. He's first, not even a Jenner. He's a he, Kardashian. He's a Jenner, God damn it. A goddamn Jenner. First of all, I think that he did the Olympics to over masculinize where he was psychologically meaning he did not get post olympic blues and turn into a, a trans person he was a trans person and he didn't know how to deal with it so he started becoming a great athlete he was trying to over masculinize himself he was like a hunk he was a hunk and if there's one thing who kid loves it's, it's hunks it's hunks <laughs> i mean i want to be a hunk you do i don't i don't want a hunk but you like you look at hunks like role models. Usually men look so at other men. That's why you're mad. No, I'm not mad because of that. Usually men look at other men because they either they want to be like that guy, or they want to act like that guy, mm -hmm. or they respect what that guy's done, like everything he's done. That's you, why I got all those looks. I walk down the street and people are like, "Damn, that's George, really prime time Sam Roberts." Yeah, like when I see you, same thing. Right. You know, if you see George Clooney, 
you, you see he's an attractive guy. He gets all the bitches. He got, incredible movies. But then he gets married, and you go, that you have the same reaction that you're having right now. No, I'm maybe, not mad. He's getting married. Maybe I see it. where you're coming from. I was. <laughs> no. I was like, what are you doing, George? That's, You've, and that's no. what I thought. I thought George had lost his mind. I thought, the way you think Bruce Jenner's crazy, I thought George Clooney was crazy. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's crazy, right? He lost like 100 mil. <laughs> right, that's that's <laughs> the way you see it. It's just, that's a terrible investment, George. What are you doing? Nah, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's usually how I see other men that I either, you know, I admire or I want to be like, you know, not in the gay form, but this guy, is just, it's, it's, the, it's just too complex for me to try to comprehend that this guy is normal. Well, it's the same brain as a young person, but now he's older. He couldn't do it when he was younger. You can't it, believe the media. You, you, you're just, you're worse than... Is that than, what's happening? What are you, in the Matrix? You're going to believe Maybe. everything the fucking media throws at you? I took the, the red pill. Obama's a fucking liar. He you. is? But I listen, how can you deny oh, this man? Jesus Christ. Who can do a wild rumpus? <laughs> That's some good rumpusing. You mean to tell me I can't take that man seriously? Fucking liar, man. You mean to tell me. Are you over here worried about me getting. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's some good rumpusing. It is some good rumpusing, Obama. That's why he's the president. You're the fucking worst. <laughs> shit, that's crazy. You worried about me getting abducted. You want to believe that I got abducted by a fucking dickless alien. Right. You want to believe in Bruce Jenner's bullshit story? What's bullshit about it? 17 million fucking idiots saw this dickhead. Yeah. And and, and come on, it's, it's, it's a fucking parade. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joke. Well... Maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm naive. Maybe it's my naivete coming through. It's a joke. We got a lot to talk about today. Lloyd Kaufman's coming in and a few. DJ Hook is sticking around. I'm going to wear a dress t on tomorrow's show. You are? Come here as a fucking widow for you. <laughs> and then you're gonna tell me, oh, who can? You're so fucking courageous. A lot of courage. I'm glad you did it. You see him wearing high heels? Get the fuck out of here. I did see him Why wearing, is he high, wearing heels? high heels. That's what he's comfortable it's in. It's disgusting. His legs ain't even cute. Who can? You <laughs> he has veins on his yo, bro, you I checked everything. Well, you know what? Disgusting, baby. What well, that's what, what Brooke Courage is what courage is there? What do you think Brooke Hogan's gonna look like when she's sixty five? <laughs> I'll fuck her in the ass. You will, right? I will fuck the shit out of her. God damn you, DJ sexy. Who Kid. You are, like you are a horrible human being. Horrible. Fuck out of here. I'm a human being. <laughs> Listen, we got a lot to talk about with that. I want to talk about uh, <laughs> I want to talk about why I'm exhausted today. I was about to get into that, but we got into all this Caitlyn Jenner stuff. Oh, you were fucking like crazy this morning? No, I oh, wish. But of course not. Uh, <laughs> and what a loser. Who Kid. Uh, first of all, I'm not a loser. How dare you? <laughs> and second of all, I also life, man. I want your opinion on Chet Hayes. Oh, shit. I want your opinion on Chet <laughs> Hayes for sure. My best friend. We'll get into all that when we continue here on Sam Roberts Show. My boy. If you go to notsam.com, mm -hmm. you can see uh, recaps of every show or youtube.com slash notsam, and you can see a little video clip. Paul Feig mm -hmm. was on the show yesterday, and he was talking about uh, the Ghostbusters reboot that he's doing. Oh, wow. So that video is already up online. You can also find the... Uh, clip of Maria Menounos calling in on Monday to congratulate me on the new show. All that stuff at NotSam.com. So oh, isn't that cute? It's very cute. Check it out. We're just If you're just joining us, Who Kid is under the impression that the Olympics made Bruce Jenner crazy, and I'm under the impression that Bruce Jenner entered the Olympics because he already was. Had his own issues going on. However... Uh, he still looks like Courtney Cox. That aside, <laughs> let's go to uh, the phones again. 866... Jesus, your phone's loud. 866-969-1969. Parachuting. Sean. Like parachuting or something. Are you on a, are you on a helicopter? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I just actually wanted your guys' opinion on the, the allegations of hate speech to Action Bronson uh, mm. Toronto last week. Uh, his cancer, uh, concert got uh, canceled because of the brunch video and uh, consensual rape he released in 2011. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, 2011. Action Bronson is just kind of a goofball, isn't he? I mean, he's, yeah, he's been on the show. He's, he's a jokester. Yeah. That's the thing about rap is that it's very difficult to uh, come down on rappers with language policing or thought policing or whatever it is. Um, I never understood that. It's like when a rapper raps about something, it's like supposed to be true. But when a, a rock star is eating rats and spitting blood, 
and yeah. raping like little girls. Okay, every I don't know night. if anybody. I, I think if, if if rock if any rock star raped girls every night, I think there would actually be some backlash. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, but um, all right, I'm exaggerating. But it does say here that uh, basically uh, it was misogyny. Mm. The petition to ban Action Bronson is about misogyny, not sp- censorship. And but bu- look, there are a lot. This sounds a lot. Mis- somebody was getting a massage. Mm, misogyny is when people act out against women. It's a big SAT word. It's a big ass word. Man. Yeah, yeah, it is. Fuck with me with that. I don't like that. Uh, this whole thing to say Action Bronson has misogynistic lyrics. Mm. You're just ignoring every black rapper that's ever been. You're finding the one <laughs> white guy thinking, oh, he's not a gangster, he's white. Mm. I'm going to accuse him of misogyny, but every black guy who's ever said anything horrible mm. about bitches and hoes, just let it go. Just I let mean, it go. Snoop Dogg went through hell with the bitch thing, so. Yeah, and then he stopped saying it, and then he stopped smoking weed, and then he, he was like, you know what? Bitch. He said, biatch. Yeah, <laughs> that's a different thing. That's in a term of endearment. Oh, yeah. Chet Hayes. Is amazing. Chet Hayes. That's my boy. Is uh, well, he's Tom Hanks' son. Is he not? Who kid? He's an Illuminati seed. But he's a he's a he's a he's a rapper. No, he's a he's came out of Illuminati's person's dick. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. It's yeah. Tom Hanks. He's a national treasure, as has been discussed many many times. But the, Tom uh, Hanks. Da Vinci Code baby. That's right. He's a Da Vinci Code baby. Mm. Tom Hanks has two kids. One of them is Colin Hanks, who we know. He's been in a bunch of movies and stuff. And the other is Chet Hayes. He's just touring for nothing. Overseas. Yeah, he doesn't have to do this. <laughs> he was overseas chilling. That's my boy, though. He's kind of set. Has he done your show before? Countless times. He's, How my, did they... he's, he's my homeboy. He hangs with me. Is he, he's not really taken seriously in hip-hop. Uh... I mean, you take him seriously because you think he'll like introduce you to his dad. Uh, no. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but he's not really like taken seriously in hip hop, is he? He's my boy. Okay, exactly. So he's in a lot of trouble because obviously he mm. is he is a white person. Tom Hanks did not uh, did not give birth to a black child. He is a a white person. He kind he doesn't really look that much like Tom Hanks, <laughs> does he? I mean, I don't really see it. Uh, Colin probably does. But Colin Hanks looks more like him, but mm. but Chet Hayes, aka, he looks like the moms. Yeah, he, he yeah, he looks more like what's her face, the moms. Tom Hanks, his wife. But he went out on his Instagram, mm-hmm. and uh, he has one of his black friends, mm. and on his Instagram he used the N word with the A. Oh yeah. Which who kid is what word is that? Nigga. That's right. Mm-hmm. He used that word <laughs> to describe his black friend as who kid smacks the mic on himself. And then uh, he uh, wanted to talk to his haters. Who's that? Chet Hayes did. And so he wrote, uh, fuck y'all hating ass niggas oh, okay. on his Instagram. And he's getting a lot of backlash for using that N-word. And uh, he made a video describing exactly why it was okay for him to do that. You want to hear this, who kid? Yeah, that's my boy. Okay, this is Chet Hayes, Tom Hanks' son, who likes to throw that N-word around. Look, I know the majority of y'all are not going to get this because the history is still so fresh in our country. But hip hop. What is it about mm. people like Chet Hayes that don't realize mm. that all you can do is shut your mouth? There is nothing that a white person can say that will educate anybody on hip hop culture, the history of black people in America. No white person has ever sounded good describing that. It's either groveling or it's incorrect or it's racist. Uh, you're right. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Like if I said, you guys need to understand. I throw around some words that could be construed as racist, but I'm friends with DJ Who Kid. Mm-hmm. And he told me it was okay. Do you think Cornell West mm-hmm. would be okay with me using racial language if he found out that you, DJ Who Kid, had given me the pass? I don't think so. You don't think so? What if? What about Mark Lamont Hill from CNN? If I said, no, no, Mr. Lamont Hill, you don't understand. I'm friends with DJ Who Kid, who's friends with Chet Hayes. This has all been cleared. No. No. Whether it's right or wrong, it's just the realization of what we're living in. Especially if your dad is Tom Hanks. If Chet Hayes comes up, man, I don't care how much you blacken up your voice. Man, y'all don't know the struggle. Oh, Tom Hanks' son, I guess we don't know the struggle. Look, I know the majority of y'all are not going to get this. Y'all. Because the history is still so fresh in our country. But hip-hop isn't about race. 
It's about the culture you identify with. <laughs> and can't no one tell me what I can't say. Is that true, kid? Is that what hip hop is about? Uh, that's my boy. Yeah, that's your boy. Can no one tell him? Where did he learn how to speak like that? Can no one tell me? I mean, I never admitted this, but I've been trying to change him back to the whiteness for years. Isn't that where the money is? Isn't it if he came out <laughs> and he spoke like Tom Hanks? But then put out rap songs. Wouldn't people be like, "What the fuck? This is mind blowing. This is like Caitlyn Jenner. It's a dual personality." You know, I've been trying to make him white for a long time. I mean, I've been trying to make you white for a long time, and it's starting to take effect. I feel like. Yeah, I'm white. It is. It's starting to get there. You're figuring out yeah. all of this. Yeah, I understand. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine is the phone number to call Sam Roberts Show. I can't believe <laughs> that Chet Hayes would be like, you know what? I'm going to make an Instagram video and clear all this up and mm. not think to himself, guess what? I'm Tom Hanks' kid. There are... There's a price that comes with that. Lots of rewards. You know, you get to watch Toy Story as many times as you want. They just send him DVDs. It's no problem. Fucking yeah. He gets to chill out in the apartment from the movie Big every single day if he wants to. Hell just yeah. fucking jumping on that tiny little trampoline, sleeping on a bunk bed. No, the Ferrari bed. Getting in the Ferrari bed. It's not a problem for Chet Hayes. But the one problem is that he can't go out there and explain to the people. Anybody who doesn't know, allow me, Tom Hanks Jr., Chet Hayes. To explain to you what hip hop culture is all about, <laughs> it just can't happen. It doesn't matter how many books he reads. It doesn't matter how many times he's watched Ice T's documentary. I don't know what it is, man. If Tom Hanks was, I wish Tom Hanks was my dad. If Tom Hanks was your dad, would you be doing any of this rap nonsense? I wouldn't be doing this shit right here. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even be talking to you. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine to call Sam Roberts Show. We'll go to Ken in Chicago. Yo, uh, uh, am I on? Yes, is you it, are. Is awesome. awesome. Yeah, buddy. Hey, Sam. Uh, hey, who kid? Um, well, what up? What I, up? I just wanted to say that um, you know I'm I'm really surprised that in 2015 we're still acting like uh, white people uh, are are can't say the n word for some reason. I'm I'm wondering where white people came up with this theory that they're not allowed to say the n word. I, I mean, mean I, I mean like look. And and on top of that, when it comes to this rap stuff, I mean, like, yo, white people bought rap music a long time ago. Like the whole culture, that's that's their thing. This is their industry. I, uh, you know, they can say whatever they want. They have enough money to get a grown ass man like DJ Who Kid <laughs> to be called a nigger to his face, and then he'll say, "Oh, that's my boy." <laughs> you know? I, I don't even know why people are acting surprised. White people are allowed to kill black people unarmed. And you're surprised that a white boy is walking around saying nigger like he owns this place? Like, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, there is a, there is there's this weird <laughs> sort of thing because because you just have to look at at perception and reality, and neither one of them are great. But if you're living in the world of perception, then you can't say these words because they're offensive and blah blah blah, and it's it's complete bullshit because the words don't mean anything. So that's not good. The reality is. Of course anybody can say these words because Ken in Chicago is right and that's also shitty. So, so I mean, like, yo, dude, white supremacy is in effect. We are living under it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, these white people run things and they can do whatever they want. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you admit it. <laughs> people are, are playthings for the white man. Like, it's, it's very clear. And I, I, I love to think that this, uh, this Bruce Jenner thing they're low key fucking with black people on this. Like, mm. I, I, white people are way too calm and way too collected, and black people are freaking out. So I, I, I think that there's some fuckery going on. Here. <laughs> are you a white guy or black guy? I'm black. Oh, see, that's how you know. See, but you're, you're like, you're like, you're sitting there going, "I'm a black guy." Mm. I live in. You live in Chicago, first of all, so you see it firsthand. You're telling oh, yeah, me, dude, they're running, dude. They're running a script here. I mean, like, yo, <laughs> dude, they literally have black people singing songs about killing each other, and then they really do it here. I mean, so like, you think this is? Like, you think this is? This is a, a white propaganda machine mm. that has created a I, culture. Like, don't get on Vanity Fair. You don't get on Vanity Fair and you know strut your stuff. 
as, you know, on accident. I mean, like, I don't think that that's an accident. I think that there are people that work in concert that, uh, you know, agree. Fuck these black people. We're going to confuse them. Wait, we're wait, gonna, wait, wait. We're going to make a... <laughs> Yo, but I, I, I asked you earlier, I asked you earlier, do you really believe I mean, like, everything the media is hitting you with? First of all, you Thank didn't you. ask me anything you I'll asked you. me. I asked you, <laughs> But, so, 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 Ken, I think who kids agreeing with you? You think that the whole Caitlyn Jenner thing, you think this racism stuff is running so deep that white people are banding together and saying, you know what, if we put Caitlyn Jenner on the cover of this magazine and pay her all this attention, we're going to confuse some black people and hopefully they'll start shooting each other again. Okay, so I don't think that they actually put all those dots together right there. <laughs> but I think I do think that, yeah, dude, white people are clearly operating under a code of conduct. They're clearly, they're clearly, you know, like, okaying things and checking each other on what to say about stuff. Dude, as a white person, I'm going to, well, it's like half a white person at least. No, I'm going to no. tell you that maybe, maybe there is an inherent white secret code, mm. but we white people, we don't even know what you guys are saying half the time. You want to talk about a secret code? You have your own language. Okay, I listen to rap music and have to go to a website so I can figure out what makes the songs cool. Now me? Yeah. White people have invented that. They they invented the instant decoding machine. I mean, like, like white people were using on week, like the week after it was invented. We used to be able to to come up with stuff. They're just they're monitoring us very closely. No, it's but, not uh, monitoring. I tell you, uh, I I believe the white people are not monitoring black people to get through to the secret code and get it deciphered. I think white people are like, God damn, do black people sound cool when they talk? We got to figure out what these words mean. I got that's what I'm thinking. I go on I go on the internet and I go to Urban Dictionary and I'm like, God damn, how does Drake make these sentences sound so cool. Well, he says nigga every two minutes. But that's why. That's why I'm trying to figure out. I go to Urban Dictionary and I try to figure out what words I can say to replace that N word and still still sound cool. And so I tell everybody, hey, you see, I got a Daily Show on Sirius XM. It's pretty on fleek right now. <laughs> I don't no, know. I, don't know right? I think that the end of this Bruce Jenner thing is they're coming after our kids. Um, they're, what? They're really there, I think the end of it, the end of it, I think that there's a very wealthy, very uh, powerful white males that are working very hard to get uh, pedophilia legalized. What? Um, I think that this is just the next step. This is just oh, my God. Step. I got to figure out what's going on here. Okay, I mean, so. He, he's, he's going deep. So this, you're right? telling me <laughs> that the Caitlyn Jenner thing, part of it yeah. is because we want to make sexual proclivities okay like we want to make it so that kind of weird sexual <laughs> stuff that we didn't accept hang on hang on i'm trying to I'm, uh, let me get to the end of it we want to make it so that sexual stuff that we didn't necessarily uh, okay before we're okaying now and that is to get to a point where rich white men can make it so that pedophilia is okay because <laughs> they want black people to kill each other so they can have sex with their children no 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 <laughs> I think you're you're I think you're a little confused as to what I'm saying. You're I'm very saying paranoid. <laughs> okay. All I'm saying is I this, have curly right? hair and I don't want to be raped. I'm saying that this whole, you know, uh Caitlyn Jenner thing, a lot of the things that are going on, the eventual end is yeah, rich white guys want the right and the A O K, the thumbs up, to go ahead and go wherever they want in the world including here in the United States, yeah. to pay a few shekels yeah. and to be able to do whatever they want with your kids. I mean, like, yeah. What <laughs> the fuck? I got to tell you something. Who I, mean, I mean, I mean, the the the, the 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 cleanest thing we could say is he's. I mean, they are sexually manipulating the kids out there. My kid don't know what's oh, going dude. on. He's not a guy wearing a dress. He's going all out. Like my son is like, yo, did he cut his dick off, Dad? <laughs> what am I gonna say oh, after that? What am I supposed to do? Like, yeah, what am I supposed to do now? We're eventually. Uh, uh, like 30 years from now, you're going to see that, yeah, dude, these people are just going to be parading around with little kids that they've purchased, you know, and it's going to be A-OK, -okay, and it's going to be like, yeah, you can do whatever they, they want. They really are trying to bring back, you know, the days of a Bacchanalian Roman Empire and everything like that. Here's, you know? my, here's my only issue. You a little the, too far. But. <laughs> my, my only issue is that I came in and said, hey... 
you know, we've seen photos of Bruce Jenner in his current form, Caitlyn Jenner, he's a transgender person. And who mm-hmm. kid said, that dude is fucking crazy. Yeah. Then you call up Ken in Chicago yeah. and say, this is all a ploy so that white people can start touching kids again. And who kid says, you know what, this Ken brings up a great point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Bruce I mean, Jenner's I, crazy, I, but Ken, no, wait, 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 Ken wait, wait. is just paying I, attention. I, 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 I don't know about the, the, the kid stuff, but, <laughs> but they are sexually manipulating kids' minds out there. Like, kids are... Oh, they, they, uh, kids want to go to school and live uh, regular and lives. It's hitting, it's hitting black people extra, extra, extra hard. Yeah, but mean, that's like, because black people, are, like black people, don't even they get freaked out by David Blaine. Like you know, black people just need to relax. We don't have jobs. We watch TV all day. You gonna put this motherfucker dude, on every channel? Dude, <laughs> fuck. Dude, dude, you think it's a? You think it's yeah, a? Niggas go get jobs now. <laughs> you think it's an, a shock that he's getting the Arthur Ashe Award? You think that's the shock that he, you yeah. know, he, he conveniently, you know, announces his co-sign from Kanye West and, and Barack Obama and, and declares himself a Republican? I'm not, I'm not looking at this on some superficial, like, entertainment stuff. I really do think that this is part of a very sophisticated plan put in place by people that have specific goals. And, yeah, Chet Hanks, yeah, he can say nigger all he wants and keep revealing himself and everything like but that. I mean, how easy, how easy, like, go ahead. Oh yeah, and people like DJ Who Kid are paid enough to just you know co-sign it. But how how easy then? How easy <laughs> well, is he's it? He's my friend. <laughs> By your well, your friend, your Hollywood yeah, friend. Your friend. How yeah. how how you're easy? His you're how, his nigger. By the way, don't don't. Jesus say Christ. Who <laughs> Kid? I you know I, I think he says nigga. How easy is it? How hmm. easy is it, Ken? Based on your yeah. theories, to manipulate black people then it, it sounds like it's very easy i mean like yo dude they dude they i think black okay. people can think for themselves don't you think that the most black people <laughs> can watch something on tv and realize i'm an intelligent human being just like a white person or a hispanic person or an asian person and sit there and say we shall overcome i cannot be manipulated no, in this way no, i'm an intelligent really. free thinking human being okay think about it like this all right think about it like this when Pharrell Williams was uh, was telling everybody else to be happy, that's right. Knowing he was saying to black people, what? young niggers, move that joke. And I'm like, <laughs> what? You, think that's you really think that that's a conspiracy theorist, right? My God, listen, Ken, like, I'm gonna need what? you. Mm-hmm to stay in touch with this show because obviously oh. I don't fucking understand the subtext of what's going on right in front of my eyes. White supremacy is the enemy. That's all you need to know. Okay. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> check, out, check out my website, allthewayonehunted.com. A L L. Okay. Now, how is that supposed to help anybody? If the word is hundred, is the word. <laughs> yeah. How is that? Aren't you part of the problem, Ken? Well, fine. I have allthewayonehunted.com. But like, well, what? that's the one we should be. That's the one I'm going to co-sign because I don't. Th- I think <laughs> black people can spell just as well as white people. Unlike I'm you, can. I'm going to add some flavor to it. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you for the call. Thanks for taking the. Thanks for taking the call. You guys have a nice one, man. I will always. I'm not going to have a nice one now. I'm scared of everything. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> Jason, welcome to the show. Yo, hey, what's I'm going done. on, man? What's up, Luke kid? So, what up, man? I'm done. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I was I was with that guy for a minute, but he lost. Me. He completely lost me. But I do agree I, to some some degree about the whole. Day. I agree that that it's about the dumbing down of morality in America, in a way. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's dumbing down or if it's evolution. You know, you could think of it in as, as a way of dumbing down, but you could also say, you know what? We've realized that some people are born differently, some people think differently, and we need to evolve in the way of our thinking and, and just open this thing up. Accept people. Realize that, you know, a person thinks this way, it's not going to change the world. You could say in the 1950s... That uh, include letting black people drink at your water fountain mm. was dumbing down morality, but you know what it was? It was evolving morality, evolving. Well, you kid, like the, vote for Sam time. Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> what a That's right. No, no, I, th- I think there's a large portion of us uh, as Americans that that are Christians that that you know, and that may be a demonized thing too. But you know, it just doesn't seem right to me for us to, to be so accepting so quickly of something like this. It just seems, I, I agree with him that it seems like kind of a conspiracy 
Live and let live, Jason. That's what Jesus would have wanted. Live and let live. There's no conspiracy. Yo, but, yo I just cannot believe how you're going to believe everything this guy's saying. Which guy? B Bruce. I believe Ken instead of Bruce. <laughs> Ken said Bruce is trying to bring back pedophilia. Let's go to John instead in Iowa. John, what's going on? What's going on, Sam? Not too much. I'm trying to figure things out hey. for myself. <laughs> Oh, good luck with that one. Yeah, really. Um, Very easily manipulated, hey, I, obviously. I mean, he, he did go a little too far with the, <laughs> with the conspiracy stuff. He did go a little too far. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little. But I think you make a good point about the uh, the fact that most white people think that black people sound cool in their lyrics. They do. I think I think it's really just the fact that most white people want to find the perfect balance between they can be as black as they want and dress and talk as black as they want without mm. getting shot by any cops or without getting beat up by any black. Yeah, people. yeah, you're right. We just want the good stuff. We don't <laughs> we don't want the we don't want the the thug label put on us, but we would like it. You know, can we wear our pants a little baggier? Can we you know can we use some of the language, some of it? Like you tell us where the line is before we get that thug label put on us. All the good stuff we'd like. All the like. Uh, getting shot for no reason stuff you guys keep that for yourselves you're 100 percent right john let's go you have to get right in the middle yeah, you man. can wear the gold teeth and you can wear everything else just, just don't uh yeah don't I, I, here's what i'll do shirt. here's what i'll do i'm gonna put gold teeth in my mouth but with the gold teeth in my mouth yeah, i'm yeah. gonna say officer is there a problem what can i do to help you <laughs> see there's the balance like on the floor, motherfucker. there's the balance thanks buddy are, are, are you angry that um it's always like the energy goes to the whites. This Indian saying nigga, Puerto Rican saying nigga. I don't know how Puerto Ricans Chinese. have gotten away with it for so long. Especially and and yeah, those like the the Asian rap people. I saw so many <laughs> Chinese people drop that bombs. The Chinese store, they be like, "Fuck you, nigga! No dark <laughs> sauce. No more dark sauce for you, nigga." Yeah, but that's because like the Chinese people and the Korean people, yeah. they implant themselves into the communities. Oh, so they like they, they own the stores and stuff like that. So they're part of the communities. White people, we just come yeah. if we're if you see white people start to buy up land in black communities that's uh that's what's it called that's uh, uh, gentrification gentrification that's yeah. not that's it's not amazing you don't know that word <laughs> <laughs> fucking white bastard i'm pretending <laughs> i know goddamn well with that word it's my motto i just yell it gentrification <laughs> full for sin uh, yeah accept everybody and gentrify them <laughs> ethan on rhode island hey sam what's up buddy Hey, uh, you know, Ken in Chicago and who Ken and everybody, I mean, let's just, like, reestablish some sanity here. Yes, please. Uh, aside from the crazy conspiracy theorists about what, you yeah, know, yeah. what, what Chicago <laughs> is all about, Bruce Jenner is not the only trans person in the world. He just happens to be a very famous one right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there who are just... You know what, Ethan? Like they were born into... You're 100% like right. They were born into the right body. Ethan is right. Their technology is allowing them to to kind of change in that way mm. but I mean it's not a perversion of morality no it's not any of this kind of stuff it's not even a who how can I explain this to my kids it's easy no. a lot of people most of us are born in a way that we understand how we you know we, we are associated with the sex that we were born with some people aren't that way it may be like a continuum so some people are different than everybody else those people now have the right or if they have enough money I guess to yeah. try to change themselves into who they think they are right and it's not hurting anybody so why not let them do it and I'm going to tell you this. Thank you, Ethan. Ethan sparked a thought in my head. Ethan is actually right. But yeah, of course it, it he's right. It depends on who it is. No. I think Bruce is a nutcase. And I'm going to tell you this. And if I, this if this Bruce Jenner thing, Caitlyn Jenner thing, oh God. is a white conspiracy, then DJ Who Kid, explain to me what Laverne Cox was doing on the cover of Time Magazine. <laughs> Black trans woman Laverne Cox was on the cover of Time Magazine a year ago. A year ago! How old was he? Laverne Cox is probably like, you know, in her 30s. Thank you. Oh, that's all it is. <laughs> that's you know, I, is. Yo, man, I'm old school, and I just feel America just accepts anything too easy. It's like everybody's scared to say shit. Well, why is nobody, like, come on, nobody's saying nothing? Like, there's no possibility that he could be a nut? I, of course, there's a possibility that Thank anybody you. can be a nut, but yeah. I don't think he is a nut. I think he's just living his life. And do that. And I really don't give a fuck about his life. That's I don't want right. to see it in my paper while I'm eating my fucking Other yogurt. Other people do, though. I mean, people obviously care. They got the phone lines. So like you that. had your yogurt this morning with a little bit of nuts in there. I put a little walnuts on my yogurt. Why not? And you see this fucking newspaper. And I go, oh, my God. You know what? I say to myself, 
Yogurt, walnuts, and courage, all for breakfast. Courage. It's inspiring, DJ Who Kid. It's goddamn inspiring. It's just too fucking easy. Meanwhile, hey, there's nuclear weapons in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get off this Caitlyn Jenner thing, because speaking of inspiring, Lloyd Kaufman is coming on the show. Lloyd Kaufman has shaped a lot of childhood. He's the man right there. He is the man. He's taught so many how to masturbate. From the 50s. Not from the 50s. He's, he was like uh, from the 80s. Okay. You know he was. You know who his roommate was in college? Mm. Oliver Stone. No, for That's right. In oh, Yale, I think. Illuminati right here. That is Illuminati. But he is an independent filmmaker, and he's been fiercely independent for 40, 4 years. Since 1975, I guess. 40 years He's been fiercely independent. Serious? Uh, he made the Toxic Avenger series, Class of Newcomb High series, Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD, Tromeo and Juliet. The list goes on and on. The, the original Toxic Avenger? The original Toxic no. Avenger. Like yes. Coming out of the swamp and... Yes. Not yeah, Swamp I mean, Thing, but Toxic Avenger. He's still alive, God. We're going to talk to him. After this, who gets sticking around? Lloyd Kaufman is on Sam Roberts' show. Don't you dare go away. What? <laughs> DJ Who can make sound effects when he's excited because <laughs> the great, infamous, legendary Lloyd Kaufman has entered the studio. Lloyd, how yeah, are you doing, man? I'm okay. Uh, Tromaville is not too far from Shadyville, by the way. I see, man. Hey, see. <laughs> 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 We're in the bad section, <laughs> where the, the chop shops and the uh, hookers are. Of course, Lloyd. And I have with me Mr. Zach Amico, my protege. Yeah, so Zach. Chilling. Zach Amico, young man. He's a star of some of your films. He's the he's the associate director of Return to Newcomb High, Volumes 1 and Volume 2. Oh, what does that entail? Mm. Uh, the, that entails uh, helping a 70-year-old man direct a movie full of 19-year-old uh, girls. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you're the one who has to ask them to take their tits out. I am one oh, of those people Sam, that has to... You know, uh, I am one of the people is. that That's, has that burden. Wow, well, well, that must be tough. Is that tough? Is that a tough request? <laughs> like when you, uh, when you, you know, that's kind of something that people expect a little bit from a trauma so, By the film. way, uh, Zach and I both get naked in uh, volume two of Return that's to Sexy. Right? Okay, again, I thought this was mm -hmm. to promote the film. Yeah. I don't know if that's... Uh, I made that mistake. We're oh. on a, we, we, we have no money, so we're, on, <sighs> we're going on Kickstarter. And over the weekend, I said, if we don't get uh, a four, up to 40,000 by Monday, I'm going to put up uh, nude photos. And how much you up No, no, to? I did it the wrong way. I said, if you get to 40,000, I'll put up nude photos of myself. And how much and you up it, to? It went down. Oh, uh, it did. People took their money back. <laughs> I should have done it the other way. <laughs> yeah. But There's if we nude get photos up to 100,000, I'm going to blow a Zach Amico if we get up to 100. You will perform oral sex on Zach Amico if you get up to 100,000. Well, of course. I would do it for free, actually. <laughs> all right. Well, you don't want to give it away. See, these are all normal situations here. <laughs> this, yeah. That's Who? how you make movies for 40 years. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know enough about Hollywood. I've been stuck in radio studios for the last 10 years. Years, so I don't, I don't, I don't really know You're the more movie. More creative business. than I am. Don't worry. <laughs> there, 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 were, there were no drug dealers back then to get money for to finance some of your movies. No, uh, no. The back then, were, there were some dentists uh, <laughs> who had had to look in the mouths of smelly old women. They gave us wow. a few bucks. Like the problem that. is, the big uh, media conglomerates control the market, so mm. it's very hard for us to get to a, uh, a public, and we want total freedom. So, you know, we don't want to get censored. So uh, oh, wow. we've used our own money, and uh, now our fans are helping us. Uh, well, like Kickstarter. And I like that uh, in the Kickstarter video, of course, Lloyd Kaufman is responsible for Troma Films, mm. which, as I said before the break, all the Toxic Avenger movies, your most famous films, obviously, Toxie and everything, spawned a cartoon series. Um, the Newcomb High series is very, very famous, and that's the that's the series that's been rebooted with Return to Newcomb High. Who get? I should have taken you. Mm -hmm. I saw Return to Newcomb High Volume One. Uh, when did it come out? Two years. Two ago? years ago. Yeah. I saw that. The way it should be seen in a theater, in theater right? sitting next to Lloyd Kaufman. What? <laughs> and my favorite part of it is that after all these years, you've been making movies for forty years. And Lloyd Kaufman is still sitting there in the theater giggling at his own fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> he's still... <laughs> does, he, does he react to like all the screaming and all the action and everything? Like, no, he's, he's just giggling at the fart jokes. No. My favorite part... <laughs> you what? can never have too many. Uh, 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 I've written six books, DJ Who, and uh, yeah. may I call you DJ Yeah, Who? of course. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Goldstein. <laughs> I got you too. <laughs> uh, 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 fat plus fart equals funny. That's right. a rule of uh, trauma production. That's it. What's the fact? And, of course, Schopenhauer. What's that? <laughs> I meant the fat. As in, fat, the whole reason I'm in the movie is so that after I could work hard and act and do it, that they could lay fart sounds in every time I move. <laughs> <laughs> is that what happens? 
Well, it's actually more fun to do it when you see Hillary Clinton to put <laughs> just just add in the fart yeah. sound effects for people you don't expect it. Right, they're just sliding out of her pants suits. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the series that's being rebooted, uh, Newcom High, with Return to Newcom High. Is that for Zach? For you, to be part of? Did you grow up on trauma? Uh, dude, I, it was everything. Uh, Twelve years old, saw Toxic Avenger on VHS. Mm-hmm. Decided the next wow. day I wanted to be a VHS. filmmaker. Uh, went to school for it. Became an intern, and I interned for Lloyd for uh, three and a half years, and then he uh, let me take the reins on the new movie. You sure know how to take advantage of free labor over there at Trauma, don't you, Lloyd Kaufman? Three <laughs> nothing, and a half years in free in this world, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. That's is. really why he's gonna blow me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's back payment. He owes you. I've got lips like a woman. <laughs> does, does Zach get killed in a lot of the movies? Well, we don't want to be a spoiler in this one. He, he's oh. killed me a number of times. Oh, uh, yeah. That was that was my re- initial request. I just wanted to die. Get it. And then I said, By the I was way, well, uh, speaking of early uh, trauma uh, people, uh, James Gunn, who brought you Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. wrote uh, Tromeo and Juliet, uh, a movie that oh, I directed wow. about in 1999. And I brought with me this amazing, uh, beautiful DVD, a collectible DVD Whoa. from DJ... Uh, DJ Hookie can yeah. have it. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, Tromeo and Juliet is one of the more famous trauma movies and yeah this guy who's now the number one superhero movie director he's mainstream though how do you handle that you talk about like you know kind of fiercely being independent and wanting to be away from the mainstream how do you feel when the when your children when your when your hollywood children end up in the mainstream instead of being kind of independent like you they know how to operate in the mainstream. James Gunn is the best guy in the world. And he, he Guardians of the Galaxy is a masterpiece. It's terrific. It's great. Uh, it's emotionally, right? It's sophisticated. Yeah. It's I don't funny. even like superhero movies anymore. No, I'm I can't over stand that crap. No, it's horrible. But his movie is <laughs> yes, terrific. That's is. a good one. Eli Roth is good. Uh, he started with us. Um, a lot of oh, people wow. who started with us are great. They know how to work the mainstream and, and get what they want. <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> I am a very unpleasant person. <laughs> yeah, I was I about to soon say. Soon we'll discern and your fans will probably be shutting the radio or whatever. I don't even know how they have a computer. Oh, no, it's radio. It's radio and apps and everything. And if you want to call in and talk to Lloyd, by the way, it's 866-969-1969. That's 866-969-1969 to Here's talk to Lloyd. D- oh, no, I'm sorry. Lloyd it's Kaufman. my underwear. Oops, yeah, what are you walking around with your underwear oh, for? I always have to have a second pair. I'm almost 70 years old. <laughs> Here's the Tromeo and Juliet oh, wow. for DJ Who. DJ yeah. Who kid's going to sell that on the, on the one train in really about 20 think, minutes. No one will buy it. But yeah. although James, James <laughs> Guns uh, makes it's it worth Canal Street. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really good. It's an iambic pentameter. And, um, it's a lot of blood on And there. you know what's interesting about our movies? Mm-hmm. You, you have a, a show, right, that uh, goes 10 hours? Or yeah, I got like an eight-hour show, which is a nightmare. On, uh, Fours and, well, and stars. Well, it's eight, it's eight hours when he shows up on time, which yeah. has not happened yet. Yeah, right. Well, we've learned how to save money. We make movies that are only eighty minutes, but they seem like eight hours. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's one of the trauma systems of producing. Uh, what is this? Will tell you. Well, that's what people don't realize. The reason <laughs> the class, the return to Newcomb High, was divided up into two parts is because. We couldn't take the 80 minutes. It's 45 minutes each. It feels like a full feature. <laughs> that is kind of a big undertaking, though, for you to say, okay, I'm going to step back into the world of directing and everything. We need to go back to Newcomb High, which is just a ridiculous concept. The concept of this movie is it's a high school next to a nuclear power plant, and then the nuclear stuff goes into the high school, and then wow. the bullies turn into nuclear subhuman monsters what? that smash people's heads. And Lloyd Kaufman says to himself, this is not something I can cover in a single film. This needs to be two movies. Well, interestingly enough, the idea was not mine. The idea was a vassal of a major devil-worshipping international media conglomerate who grew up with trauma movies. Wow. It was his idea to remake it. A Stars uh, is a, a vassal of Liberty. Uh-huh. Uh, who were about to buy uh, some giant other thing. Uh, he it was his idea. It was uh, that the guy's guy, idea. The guy it? running stars or whatever. The guy running stars. Yeah. So, but the movie uh, channel. He let. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And he let me direct it if, uh, and have total freedom, but it had to be a very small budget. Mm. So, wow. Uh, and, that's that's uh, uh, what what was his interest in it? Did he just he was, was a fan? He was a fan of trauma. <laughs> and was like I'm in this ridiculous. But they're only position. distributing volume one. <laughs> 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 just staying away from it's a two part uh, movie, uh, DJ. Yeah, it's, it's like so, Kill Bill. So, uh, the way it was yes. Kill Bill one and in two. In fact, Tarantino was the one that stuck it in my brain. We were in Spain. Uh, uh, we both had a movie in Sitges, and he suggested that I try to do something more ambitious, uh, mm. uh, even though I'm in the underground. Is smoking weed uh, a, f- a factor in watching these movies? Or? 
Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it I mean, certainly doesn't hurt. <laughs> no, it, it's uh, it's good. Is it is it a different experience of me watching it normal or should I really get high? I, I, I try it. I, I think you know you. our movies. They bear. They got subtext, right? Right. Uh, There's a lot of subtext family, to it, right? but I think uh, either either uh, being 12 or high on drugs will make you really embrace. What trauma is, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, you can you can see where Lloyd leans politically in these things. You can mm. see where uh, where he's going in terms of the planet, everything. But he does it in such a way where it's not preachy. It's there's there's titties and heads blowing up and stuff like that, so it works. Poultry guys, night of the chicken dead. Uh, <laughs> you see, it's an anti fast food. I see you're in very good shape. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I see that's the thing. Fucking bitches. <laughs> Maybe we have to that's, that's your workout. Oh yeah. Fucking bitches. Uh, I need to be one of these movies. But but that's what, what I'm saying. Like for me, I love fast food. <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say, bitches. <laughs> you say that. I'm in hip hop. Oh, oh gosh, I'm so shocked. We say cunt and. Oh, that's, no, that's no, no, no. Zach, Zach told me to say that. I Zach, don't pass him. No, that is a horrible word. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm sorry, DJ. For for me, I enjoy fast food. I eat fast food all the time. I watch like the documentaries, and I get mad at the filmmakers because I'm like, why are you trying to scare me into mm. not doing what I like to do? But I watch Poultry Guys Night of the Chicken Dead. Mm. I enjoy every minute because it's a movie about a ghost chicken that kills things. <laughs> well, it's also uh, it's anti fast food, and it really I fast food it. is huh? uh, disgusting. And McDonald's are miserable. Uh, they moved in next to our little building and almost destroyed it. And we had rats the size of raccoons that immediately yeah, came uh, in. Yeah. So you uh, did not have rats in Tromaville before McDonald's moved in? No, except when I used to go down to Blockbuster in Texas. Uh, there were rats there. <laughs> <laughs> we used to try to sell them our movies. They never. The Blockbuster never took one Troma movie. Is that right? The whole time Blockbuster was open. No. Because Troma, you know, growing up, like, like Zach, you were just saying, finding these movies on VHS, it was, that was the whole deal, is like, you'd go into a video store, and I guess it would have to be a mom and pop rental place or mm. something, or your friend would have it, or it'd be a copy of a copy or something like that, and you'd stumble upon these movies. I can't believe that Blockbuster... The Never franchises. Was. The franchises were owned by human beings, and they took it. Mm. They would take the Troma movies, but the corporate, which, uh, they was owned by Viacom, who owned mm. Paramount, who owned the, half the world. Uh, they refused any of our movies. Why? Wow. Uh, because uh, I mean, there were worse things. The problem is the media. Comp the media is controlled by a small number of these conglomerates, and and they want to own what they you know they want to own everything, is or it, they want to control it, and it, we're uh, we're independent. Is it easier or more difficult now? Much more difficult. We're it more is. famous thanks to the wonderful world of file sharing, and I'm happy with that. No problem. You but like it? I'm. Oh, you bet. So Absolutely. how do you make any money? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. That's why I'm on Kickstarter. Right. We. Uh, the this crazy Hurst. man put 250 of his movies on YouTube for free. Like, like all uh, of them. You can buy movies on YouTube. You don't have to buy he yours. Just put them up. He's insane. That's incredible. Well, we've been around for 40 years, and yeah, thanks. Yeah. We wanted to thank our fans mm -hmm. who are you know young and poor and. Yeah, I just want to see, and that's also. I mean, it's smart too, because like if you're like mine and Zach's age, you did the VHS experience where you find movies that way. Now you gotta find them online. It's not. What to, it's one of those things where if you have to pay for everything, how are you supposed to stumble across anything? Well, also we're artists. I mean, as stupid as we are, you know, <laughs> nobody bought Van Gogh's. Uh, uh, see how I say Van Gogh? Yeah, Some no, people I think see. it's Van Gogh, but I, being a Yale University graduate... I was uh, about to correct you. Yeah, I know how to say it. <laughs> but his stuff, nobody sold it. Nobody bought it, rather. Nobody mm. would buy his pictures. His brother, I think, bought one for 50 bucks or something. And look at Van Gogh now, the Probably, you know, so we're like the Van Gogh of the uh, underground, right, Zach Amico? Yeah, absolutely, boss. It's like Van Gogh. <laughs> oh. Right, no, it's just something that rhymes. <laughs> no wonder you've been cooped up in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I also like the, because I've always had a, kind of a, a, a an issue with Kickstarter and, and, and crowdfunding, stuff like that. Like, I like, I think it's just that I like when people I like do it. And when people I don't like do it, I get annoyed by it. Like, I, I think that somebody like, what's his face from Garden State? Zach. Zach Braff. Zach Braff. I don't think Zach Braff needs to do a Kickstarter. I think well, he's doing fine. And I don't think, yeah, like, but like, when you guys, when you guys do it, it's obvious, like, like, dude, we're giving away our movies. We make no money. Like, Lloyd has to travel with the movie when it's in theaters. We got to find it somewhere. I'm mm. the Willie Loman of, uh, of the movie business, uh, DJ. Uh, but you know what's what's interesting is the the mainstream guys, the guys making the uh, St. Andreas Fault. Uh, what, what they go to get money from the conglomerates, and then right. they have to make something that's uh, uh, you know kind of cookie cutter. Uh, not that that is. I'm sure that's a wonderful film. I haven't seen it. I saw it, St. Andreas, uh, and it is literally 
I was reciting the lines to the movie as I was in the theater before they happened. No. Yes, it's. I mean, you talk about cookie cutter. It's well done. The earthquake looks real. Like, oh my God, is the rock gonna save her? Oh, thank God he did. But it was literally the same script that's been used probably fifteen times in the past. What? But the, uh, so the point is, the, the the big guys go to somebody. We we they, or they go to the, the dirty banks to get their money. Right? The yeah. Banks that probably they should be in jail, most of them, right? Obama is constantly indicting them uh, with good reason. Uh, so here we go to our fans for money. What's wrong with that? In mm. fact, for 40 years, Michael Hurst and I have been putting up our own money because we, we no banks or anyone will touch. I mean, uh, <clears throat> because we're so <laughs> idealistic and so we want total freedom. <laughs> where is the kick? Because so there's nothing wrong with going to your fans. Mm. A, it's marketing uh, 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 consulting. We find out, do it. does anybody want a movie out there? If you want it, uh, uh, you know, we've shot volume two of Return to Nukem High, mm. so the oh, the risk is over. All we right. need we need money for sound design and for um, draw. I mean, for um, <laughs> the uh, color correction and uh, Zach Amico's uh, paycheck. Right. And uh, all that Still kind of stuff. That. Find so, again one so though, maybe. <laughs> if the fans want it, uh, uh, this is a way to find out. It's market research. Right. And if we had Boston Consulting, yeah. right, one of those, they'd, we'd pay two hundred thousand dollars to find out if somebody wanted a movie called Return to Nukem High Volume Two. Mm. We'd, we'd have to. We, you know, that's. That's what the majors do. They have those focus groups, right? They have tracking, and should we put in uh, Lindsay Lohan, or should we put in uh, so-and-so, <laughs> what tracks? But we don't do any of that. And I think Our fans it, tell us what to do, and they're right. It's also very important that you brought up that you go to Kickstarter to get the full freedom to do whatever you want. And you can feel that. Like, people say that, but then they come out with something that you feel like you've seen before. And I think that's that's what makes your movie's valuable is that you watch them and you can tell these are guy or guys that put something that they're like, no, this is the way we want it to be. This is the way we know our fans like it and we're not kind of kowtowing to anything. That's a good point. And mm. by the way, there's a wonderful film uh, uh, that was uh, partly financed on Kickstarter called Kung Fury. And it's I think it's made by gamers. Uh, mm. Uh, uh, you, you know, red. You read. You, I, I, Was it like a, a I heard your, your Red Dead Redemption. Uh uh, you did something with them, the right? Of a while oh, back. Yeah, that was yeah, very funny. It was oh, great. Wow, it was terrific. You heard that? Yes, Kaufman that was, has done his homework. Yeah, this it was funny. Hilarious. No, it was funny. It was genuinely funny. <laughs> but but these guys, check this out. Kung <laughs> Fu Fury. I, I don't know why I'm plugging them. But, <laughs> yeah, don't. But they're they they're, they're, don't. The, they're I think they're in Sweden or something. Mm. And uh, it just if you, if you watch the first few minutes of it, and if you're not pulled in by it, it's hilarious. And clearly they're gamers. It's mm. wonderful. Where and it's Kickstarter. Wouldn't be there without. Where can people go to find your Kickstarter? Uh, uh, the easiest thing is go to any social media site, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we're hashtagging everything Save Nukem High. Mm. And uh, that way it leads right to the Kickstarter. People link the Kickstarter right from there. Okay. And uh, if you go to young, a, a young naked Asian boys dot com, uh, it'll be there too. Me, uh, yeah. Huh? yeah, that's just that's just in your book. Right? I used to be a young. Hair <laughs> well, no, in my book it was young hairless Asian guys. <laughs> now it's young, uh, young, just young, any young Asian boy. Because yeah. I'm almost seventy years old. You're not picky and anymore. I didn't carry around an to, extra set of underwear. If you go, <laughs> if you go to SR Show SXM, that's our Twitter account. SR Show SXM on Twitter, you can see that we've got the link and everything posted there right now. So oh, you can find you. it. Thank uh, you so much. You never went the um, the fashion route? Like, you know, all the classic movies on t-shirts and stuff like that. You, you, you could make money off of that. Uh, we can't even... If we have t-shirts. Uh, Troma has a store on, mm. uh, on online. You want to rock uh, Troma shop. Hmm? You Troma should. Shop. And Troma also is smart because they still understand make a badass poster mm. and people will see your movie and people will buy the poster. Yes, we have artists. We we do uh, uh, paintings of our posters. You know, not we, but we yeah. have uh, artists who are pretty well known, who are fans, who help us out. Put Boy, those uh, uh, put those headphones on, Lloyd. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm going to take a call. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine. DJ Who Kid, Zach Amico, and the legend Lloyd Kaufman in studio on Sam Roberts Show right now. We go to oh, this one. We go to Mike in Delaware. What's up, Mike? Hey, Sammy. Stunt brain. Hey, Stump Brain. Uh, uh, hey, Lloyd, uh, I'm an alum. I'm a trauma alum from Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD, oh. and the trauma system. Oh. I didn't know. I didn't know, Mike, that you were in Sergeant Kabuki Man. I'll tell you a couple things. Number one, Sergeant Kabuki Man is an amazing movie. But number two, Mike was the uh, producer for Opie and Anthony for a while over at K Rock, and now he's a huge part of uh, of the Blaze. 
Wow, yeah. Mike. Yeah, so he's very, very successful. Another very successful... In spite, in spite of Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So the plot, for those that don't know, the plot of Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD is there's a kind of bumbling police officer that goes to a kabuki show. Yeah, that is. A spell goes into his mouth, what? and he turns into somebody who uh, is half cop, half kabuki warrior, who <laughs> transforms throughout the movie. I like it. Yes. Now, uh, Sam, uh, Sam and uh, Mr. Mike, uh, you should know that Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD now has a podcast just premiered, uh, Kabuki wow. Man's Cocktail Corner, and uh, <laughs> this week it's, it's, it premiered online. You so, never uh, stop. It's on YouTube. It's a short what? podcast, and this year, it's, uh, this week it features uh, Capricorn Smack, a uh, wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, ensemble. Uh, Music. I, I don't know what well, you call them. Lloyd, correct me if I'm wrong, but that that won the Houston International Film Festival, did it not? Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. Yeah. Yeah, won a lot of film festivals. You bet. Uh, and was... this was a big movie, and it, and if you missed Comedy Central's uh, version of Trauma, the Trauma System, it's on uh, it's on YouTube too, with uh, my most embarrassing performance on television to date. But I wanted to say good luck with this, uh, Lloyd. I'll be, I'll Thanks, be uh, joining the crowdfunding. But I want Sam to be uh, some sort of victim in the new <laughs> film. He's got to have his face melted like I did, or have some sort of primordial ooze covering him. We keep trying to get him out to Tromaville to kill him for real, but uh, no luck. <laughs> we want to do a head squashing. We don't want to Very waste good. any money on cantaloupes. <laughs> uh, thank you for the, this. Troma system was our um, our uh, uh, info. Commercial. Infomercial, oh, yes, yeah. and uh, it's uh, it's it's hilarious. It was on Comedy Central a long time ago, but it's Good still content. online. That's very funny. And I remember, Mike, you were today. great. What's that? It haunts me to date. The, uh, <laughs> the news team here is constantly bringing it up. <laughs> well, you owe me, buddy. You owe me. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Take care, guys. I'll talk to you Thank later. You. Thank you. Do you have a favorite of your films? Oh. Honestly, yeah. R Return to Newcom High, Volume 1 and Volume 2, I th honestly think when they're put together as a uh, kind of an epic, I think they will be my uh, swan song. And now, it's all about a duck, too. It's, <laughs> it is about a swan song with a duck. You know my favorite it's fucking... It's my duck song, I guess. I was talking about this gag. It's the dumbest gag. And I was talking about it for weeks after watching this movie. You know what my favorite part of the Return to Newcom High, Volume 1 was? You're holding a glass of milk in one hand and a phone in the other, and every time the phone rings, he picks up the milk no. like he's going to answer the phone and spills it all over himself. It's great every time. Now that yeah. is direct to Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. Direct Laurel and Hardy. Well, it works. It works. Thank you. Thank um, you. When you're making movies now, because my, growing up, like, especially when I started, I went to Syracuse and I was taking film classes and stuff, and I started to realize that everything Troma was doing, number one, it was shot on film, mm. and all the, all the effects were in-camera effects, meaning you did things, you didn't put it into a computer and kind of animate it or do anything. Like you said, if somebody's head got squashed, you had to find a cheap way to do it, so you put a mannequin body in a cantaloupe, and you squash uh, it, and then red stuff goes everywhere. Well, we wanted to squash real heads, but uh, fortunately, we'd be... Uh, Locked yeah. up. I'd be my, bit, uh, my bitch in jail and have all my cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> Did you... <laughs> Did you have trouble kind of transferring over? Because the new Return to Newcomb High obviously has some in-camera effects, but a lot of digital and CGI stuff, too. Was that like a compromise for you? M most of our... Um, well, we had some... With Volume 2, we've got some really horrible uh, CGI and uh, After Effects. So we, but the, I think we did it... I think they're fun. I think we we don't have the money to do what mm. uh, what The Rock can do with uh, Andreas Fault. But <clears throat> I think we've used that medium in a way to satirize it mm -hmm. so there's stuff in volume two that i think the fans will enjoy just because it's uh, it makes fun of it doesn't uh, that make it classic though if you if you're doing it in that direction yes of, yeah. i well our fans like the fact that we we do practical mm. special effects and you know we haven't done 3d and we haven't done you know that I mean, we can't really <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta explain a, a Lloyd Kaufman movie fan. Like, wh what kind of people are these people? 
the, the fan? Fl- yeah, what kind of fan? It, I, I, just I, imagine I, me, but not as charming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, boy. Actually, no, that, that, Damn, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. Come on. <laughs> what, what was the wild? I mean, the fans are like, it's been 40 it's, years. Yeah, there are three. We go to uh, San Diego Comic Con, or I'm heading out to Indianapolis to uh, Indie Pop uh, next weekend. And uh, you'll see there's the people my age, there yeah. are people who are teenagers. Uh, uh, it used to be mainly uh, young boys, uh, which is what I like. But uh, <laughs> but in the last ten years, yeah, we've gotten I'd say it's about sixty forty. Now we have about forty oh, percent who are a gyno. Does it, does it blow your mind? We don't say uh, woman. That has the word man in it, and girl, of course. You, you know that's hey. why we don't say bitch. We say gyno American. Oh. Gyno American. Could you do that? Who could? Do you think you could actually maybe take that to some of your rapper friends? I'll take it over there. And, gyno, and, gyno Brit. Gyno African American. Uh, right. Yeah, if it's, if it's Gino LBGTQ, for example, uh, which is one of the themes of Volume Two of Return to New mm. very heavy uh, LBGTQ. Get my Gino on. Yeah, you got to get. Uh, uh, look at that. You got to get Caitlyn Jenner involved. In, 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 in. Shout out to all my Gino niggas <laughs> out there. You got to get Caitlyn Jenner involved. This is great timing yeah. for you to be doing an LGBT focused thing. This couldn't be better. You got the transparent show that everybody's talking about. You know, Laverne Cox on Orange mm. is the New Black. Now, uh, now, Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, this is all coming up roses for you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm naked in the film, too. It, yeah, he hasn't plus. gotten naked. No, he hasn't. And the, I'm and way the, ahead of her. Are you tucking? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because yes. the verdict's out on whether or not, uh, on whether or not Caitlin is tucking or went through the surgery. Nobody knows for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> but now, Zach, you're naked in Return to Newcomb High. You were the associate director, and you got totally naked. But you didn't tuck because you're. No, a, I got conned into that. You're pretty a young, Did you really get naked in the movie? Oh, absolutely! I, when I came into audition, I, I said I would get naked, and his you just offered greedy, it up. His, his greedy little eyes lit yeah. up, and I had to go <laughs> in for an audition. Crazy. And then, uh, then he saw greedy. my dick ring. More, uh, <laughs> he saw my Prince Albert, and he got so excited because he's had naked fat guys with little dicks, uh-huh. but he's never had one with a little pierced. Exciting, dick. right? There. <laughs> <laughs> and you should his the light in his face. And oh, I've never had one of those before. Is that right? And I, I just, <laughs> I knew I had the part. Yeah, because you are a husky fella. So oh, what, certainly. So what happens when you go in? To get a Prince Albert done, were you were you this size when you got your penis pierced? Yeah, I, I, I'm uh, 27 now. I got it when I was uh, 18. Whoa. Okay, and you were big. You were big at 18. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, You've I've, always I've, been a, a large individual. By the way, Mr. Uh, Amico you, uh, has a line in the movie which he wrote called "What the What's the Haps?" Yeah, which as, I think you know, is a reference to yeah, Mr. that is Sam a reference to, to you. There's the evidence. Wow. Everybody calls up here and they go, "Oh, I heard what's the haps on Entourage." You know, did you steal it from them? I say, "No, they stole it from me." Oh, right. I heard correct. Ice Cube say, "What's the haps in the 1980s?" Yeah, he stole it from me. Radio Thank excellence. God. Mm-hmm. For people well, like Zach Amico, see, how about when we admit, I, I, this was a, it was a tribute to an homage to Mr. Sam Rock. And I will Let's graciously see. accept that homage. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, how about when we see movies that cost two hundred million dollars today that have stuff that we started twenty years ago? Do right? you see that? Oh. Yeah, every, I mean, look at the scary movie franchise. I mean, if mm. that's not just trauma movies, it really is redone with the bad effects without and the everything. political yeah. content, though. Right? right? It's just the yeah. no, no, no. We're not going to waste time trying to think of a story or a script or anything. Or have any the substance? You know, it's just going to be. Uh, Does that drive you guys crazy when people don't really pick up on the substance? Because trauma films are like, I mean, look. Even when I was plugging your appearance and everything I was like for those of you that don't know Trauma you know it was what Rhonda Shear played on USA Up all night all the time and it taught a lot of uh, young boys how to masturbate for the very first time I think it did oh I get that all the time where a 13 year old kid will come up to me at one of the comic book conventions Mr. Coffin you know the the first time I I jerked off was during the steam room scene in Toxic Avenger you know and the guy's sweating (laughs) (laughs) sometimes he hires them to associate director's movies (laughs) (laughs) I was playing with myself when I saw Toxic Avenger. You didn't do that? I probably touched my ass, but that's about it. I don't know why you were touching your ass. But it was because these movies were so well done, especially if you saw them as a kid, because yeah. it had just the right amount of nudity where you'd be sitting the there titties. knowing it was coming, and you'd be very excited Pardon throughout the, the whole movie. Yeah, that's right. And you'd be very excited throughout the entire movie, just waiting, 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 so that when you got your ten seconds, it was all you needed. Mm. All you needed was. One thing that's part of like this generation of kids that are working on their own movies now. Whenever we watch our old VHSs, yeah, and <laughs> all the sex scenes are always worn out because you could tell we all used to rewind the <laughs> <and> <laughs> rewind, play, rewind, and then pause at the right part. Yeah. That's it. 
But getting back to your point about the uh, sophisticated stuff, uh, Toxic Avenger Part 2, I had a joke about David Mamet, mm. Mm. and I believe that New York Times gave it a good review uh, bec because of that joke. Oh, and bro. and, and uh, uh, poultry guys, not of the chicken dead. I put in some Walt Whitman if you're at a great moment. Goal, I thought it was really amazing. Wow. Uh, uh, gal says, I hear America singing during the middle of a uh, uh, this crowd who just loves eating this greasy chicken. And, <laughs> and, uh, and the bad girl says, the uh, bad gyno says, uh, I hear America singing. And nobody got it. Nobody. Nobody. At least if they, I mean, maybe people got it. Nobody ever said to me, hey, that was a great use of Walt Whitman. Does it drive you crazy when people don't get the more intelligent humor? or the sort of subtext to what's going on or is it sort of if you get it then it's in there for you and if not no what drives me crazy is I'm living in a refrigerator carton under the uh, overpass of the highway and <laughs> uh, some crack addict uh, some flock addict now is uh, eating my face off when I wake up that's hey. what drives me crazy do the people who went through the trauma system do they pay it forward like is James Gunn being like look here's a, here's a swift million I can afford it now well, he put me in his movie. At you know, I'm, I saw I'm you a, were in the prison scene, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's put me in all his movies. James Gunn. Uh, you know, he's the best. He's he the better best. give you a big fat paycheck with him. <laughs> I mean, now he's not. He's yeah. not. He's not. You know, scratching no, and clawing like he, he's, he. He paid his dues. Believe me. He wrote Romeo and Juliet. He wrote my first book. Uh, he wrote the first book that I wrote. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> all I need to know about filmmaking, I learned from the Toxic Avenger, which is, uh, we, uh, you know, it's 15 years. People are still uh, buying that book. Well, oh, he's great. He's a good guy. Speaking of Toxic Avenger, Dutch in Connecticut, if you want to throw the headphones back on, Dutch in Connecticut wants to uh, pipe in. What's going on, pal? Hey, boys. Sam, love the show. Congrats. Thanks, Long pal. overdue. Long overdue. Yeah, I was hey, thinking guys, that, too. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of Toxic Avenger. It was filmed in my hometown of Boonton, New Jersey. And to this day, it still stands as the only good thing that's ever happened to that town. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, I promise the, you, they will not get the intelligent humor there. No, I wouldn't think so. The people of Putin, though, are in the film, and uh, I'm eternally grateful. The whole town, uh, they were all the, you know, we don't say extras, we say actor persons, because mm. extra is sort of a demeaning word. But they were the actor persons in uh, the scene when Melvin jumps out the window of the uh, of the gym and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Classic they were, scene. They were so nice to us. Uh, and the mayor of Putin, everybody was great there. And they, they had a 30-year reunion in Putin not too long ago, uh, and showed, I couldn't go, but they showed Toxic Avenger and mm. Toxic himself showed up and was very That's exciting. amazing. Toxie. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to David in Connecticut who's on the phone here with Lloyd Kaufman on Sam Roberts Show. What's going on, David? Hey, boys. How you doing? Mr. Kaufman, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. How would one go about getting a role in one of your movies? I've been a toxic Avenger fan my entire life, the whole Trauma Bill series. Love it. And you you should kind of just list. keep keep an eye on uh, my Twitter uh, at Lloyd Kaufman. I I usually announce it there. When you see us making, uh, getting ready to do casting, uh, be aggressive. Usually, anyone who's very aggressive, uh, right, Zach Amico? Anyone who's aggressive and has some energy. The more annoying you are, the more likely you are to be in the movies. The what? more what? The more annoying you are to the people working on them, the more likely you're going to get a part. Huh. So, so, so just be don't be uh, don't be shy. In fact, uh, the first turn on uh, Madonna was begging to be in that movie. That was Vincent D'Onofrio's first movie. And my partner, Michael Hers, and she was aggressive, but I was at the Cannes Film Festival and Michael turned her down. He, she, he wasn't, that was, her, she wasn't his image of uh, oh. what uh. he wanted in the first turn on, which was about a summer camp. Uh, this was before she became a big star. And she, yeah, I said, would hope so. She even <laughs> said, uh, Yeah, I know you're a big star and everything, like a version was great. It just doesn't fit my image. Yeah, well, six months later, she was on the cover of Newsweek. Or six whatever. months. Literally. She said she was going to be a big a musical star. And uh, as our first turn on was uh, uh, unimpressing people, she was. Uh, she definitely sucks some good dick that month. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. You know, you would know who could. Again, oh, you're, you're, yeah. you're ears to the street on all these things. How did she get the muscles? She's really got guns. I mean, uh, she's taking some kind of steroid. Is she doing what? I mean, it takes a lot of strength to suck dick. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't know. No, I don't know what you're saying, but I will take your word for it. You just think she didn't suck no dick? No, no, no. I just don't know how much strength it oh, takes. Okay. I've never done it. You look like a character that needs to be in the movie, but I need to be killed immediately on the first scene. That's not fair. It's not, not a fair thing to say. Is this, you called it your swan song. Is this the last time you're directing a movie? Every film I make, uh, people <laughs> tell me it will be the last one. Stop doing Michael this. Michael Hurst uh, would be the first to rejoice if I didn't make another movie. He's my partner of 40 years. Oh, wow. Well. He, he hates me. They also run a movie studio together. <laughs> what? You're also, by the way, Zach Amico, 
is a part of our friend Luis J. Gomez. Oh. Luis. He hates Luis. Luis J. Gomez's podcast, right? Yeah, I am the co-host on the Real Ass Podcast on uh, Stand Up New York Labs. Do you know, Lloyd Kaufman, what a big deal uh, Zach was? I didn't know he and Luis had a show together, and they've never invited me on, so... Uh, what? Screw them. I've invited you on like twice already. <laughs> Three times, maybe. Well, you know, this is showbiz, you know, Zach Amico, you know, he is. He's, he's, no, he's no James Gunn. No, no. He's no I Eli just don't Roth. want to take my boss he's, around an animal like Louis Jingle. <laughs> no, Zach is the best. Zach's the absolute best. So what is, I mean, how long, again, if you want to in, invest in the Kickstarter, and I think you should, check the link out. We just posted it, SR Show SXM on Twitter. There's a link to the uh, Kickstarter for Return to Newcomb High Volume 2. The chicks in this movie are absolutely gorgeous. The guy knows. Yes, in this movie are absolutely gorgeous. The first one was it's a lesbianic a uh, love story. Actually, the romance is uh, lesbianic, mm -hmm. and, and the best looking and most job. talented women in the forty years of trauma movies. Yes, yes. These, absolutely, and totally devoted. Uh, uh, K Katie Cochran, Asta Paredes, Zach Amico, uh, 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 Van. Uh, uh, everybody in this whole cast, <laughs> you know, there's everyone in this movie, and we all hang out. We go to every screening, and it's just such a talented group of people. It's insane. I was going to ask. In you. fact, Asta met uh, Clay Clay Von Karlowitz. Uh, Our two leads are getting they, married they, in they, September. They, really? And, yes. and uh, Mark uh, Mark uh, uh, Quinnett. All, the, all those those the nucleus. They're totally devoted. Uh, this has been a four year poll, and they are just totally uh, wonderfully devoted to the project. Really, I meant I genuinely never, devoted. I never got to my question, Zach, about your. Prince Albert. Oh, of course. Like, yeah. what is the reaction? Because you said you also, you're not the most well endowed man. Uh, no, I've I've never impressed anybody. So, what is the reaction when you go into a tattoo piercing place and you're like, no, I want this pierced? Uh, fury from the angry Spanish lesbian who was doing it, <laughs> and she was like, uh, all right, just don't piss on me. Really? Like, she was furious with me. She hated me. <laughs> Why? Has she been pissed on before? Is that I have no something idea. that happened? Maybe I just looked like I was gonna. We got a pisser walking in. I did have on a diaper and have my legs up in the air the whole time. Okay, so, so you could see where that impression would be. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, uh, she hated me, and she was furious. <laughs> but you have but, a memory, and it's still pierced. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now it's uh, now it's stretched and obnoxious, and now it's going to be uh, immortalized on film. <laughs> well, I want everybody... Can't wait. I, yeah, everybody's got to make sure they see this thing, and that it's color-corrected, which means you have to invest... <laughs> In the Kickstarter, again, it's Return to Newcomb High Volume 2. If you haven't seen the Newcomb High movies, mm. like, I don't have a lot of respect for you, but you've still got time, because like you said, the originals are on YouTube, is that right? They're all over the place. Class of Newcomb High from the 80s. There, right. There are, uh, there are three of them. Newcomb High, uh, Subhumanoid Meltdown, Class yeah. of Newcomb High Volume 2, Part 2, rather, and then uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Subhumanoid. Class of Newcomb High Park. Which are also three. on Netflix streaming if you have that, or you can Perfect. go on our YouTube, youtube.com slash trauma movies. And oh, you should get you. the Blu ray of Return to Newcomb High Volume 1. Yes. I have it in it's my collection. Oh, thank it's you. a very, very good movie. It's one of those things where you walk in, as somebody who's watched these movies, I walked in and I was like, ah, you know, I'm just kind of going because I have a loyalty to the brand. There's a good chance that after all these years, they kind of fucked this whole thing up. And then I watched it. I was like, they didn't fuck it up. It's great. <laughs> Thank <Wow>. you. <laughs> By the way, you should come, Mr. Sam Roberts. Yeah. I mean, uh -oh. I would invite you, but you've, you've got a reputation and a career. No, I'll and you're, too, son. If you could. No. Troma Dance Film Festival. We've mm. been putting on this film festival for 16 years. It was inspired by Trey Parker and Matt Stone when we all went to Sundance years ago. Uh, it's a free festival. You can submit your movies for free. You, you can see them for free and no VIP policy. But you all ought to come and be on the panel. The 16th annual Trauma Dance is so going to be in... I'll watch all the movies and then I'll swing through. It's yeah. going to be in uh, 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 Brooklyn. It was in Williamsburg last year at the uh, Paper Box. And this year it's July 24 and 5. It's all free. Let's do it. Who can? Public can come. Yeah, you yeah. guys should be on. Yeah. We'd do a panel. It's going to be kind of I'll, I'll do the panel. It'll be wonderful. Let's it's do it. July 24 and 5. The panel would probably be on the 25th. Okay. So if you are if you have time, that would be terrific. I'm we're going to have uh, somebody from YouTube and somebody from uh, Vice, I think, and somebody from Sirius XM Satellite Radio. That would be great, Sam Roberts. Prime time, Sam wonderful. Roberts. Guys, thank you both for stopping by. We'll thank all three of you for stopping by. Of course, DJ Who Kids on Twitter at DJ Who Kids. Huh? Bye. <laughs> you had to be, be here, motherfucker. You're submit <laughs> at least once a week. Period. Uh, DJ Who Kid on Twitter. You can get. Lloyd Kaufman on Twitter at Lloyd Kaufman. Mm -hmm. Follow me on Twitter at Zach is not funny. Z A C is not funny. That's right. And of course, submit 
to giving money to this movie. Go to Kickstarter and submit to Return to Newcomb High Volume 2. You can get the direct link at SR Show SXM on Twitter. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Yeah, Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we'll yeah. see you. Toxie's here. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Toxie, look out. DJ who? Watch out, Toxie's. Look out. Oh, no. DJ's, DJ's head. Oh, no. It's, it's, he lost his oh, boy. Oh, my It's getting God. very, very weird in here. Help. We'll see you help, help. tomorrow. Give me them tits. Nicole Ryan will be here. <laughs> That's right. Nicole Ryan will be here tomorrow. You should meet Nicole Ryan. You want to talk about a, a well-endowed woman <laughs> who'd be good for a trauma film. Okay. Nicole Ryan That's will be here tomorrow. We'll see you then live on Sam Roberts' show. Goodbye, right. everybody. Right.